Hey everyone, I'm meteorologist Tucker Antico uh, alongside meteorologist Alyssa Andrews and we have an update on severe weather that has moved into central Indiana. And we've been talking about these storms all evening long. Uh, we're going to keep the weather all up here. I'm going to zoom in on a tornado warning that has just been issued and this is uh, just north of Lafayette and we can see this here. Uh, it's radar indicated rotation right there near Monticello and again this storm is actually much closer to Fowler but it is moving right now pretty quickly to the northeast which is why the National Weather Service uh, put that warning up for uh, again uh, the areas just north of Lafayette there. Uh, we're looking at this storm because it has that radar indicated rotation as I just mentioned and I'll switch us again to our velocity so that we can see exactly that radar indicated rotation they're talking about and it's tough to see exactly here because we are a little bit farther from the radar but if we uh, pull up our weather wall here I can point out what we're looking at and uh, show you exactly uh, what it is that we need to watch with this storm and again we're looking at this red polygon here that's where the storm currently is you have some of those uh, brighter green colors and, and brighter reddish and blue colors next to each other it's a bit of a messy storm there's not a very clear circulation in it but there is for sure at least some embedded rotation in here. Again, the storm is moving to the northeast, which is why uh, the warning is now out in effect for uh, areas around Brookston up towards Monticello. Uh, but this is ahead of the current storm by about 10 minutes. It will not move into this polygon for about 10 more minutes. However, if you're in this warning, you do need to head down to your safe place, a lowest floor of your house, a basement's ideal, or at least head to a room that is uh, not near exterior walls or windows. And the reason that we have this warning out a little more in advance is because these storms are moving very quickly. Let's keep the wall up here. I'm going to be scrolling through our radar right here. I'll walk back on there in a moment. But I'll get some information for you because, again, these storms are moving quickly, and that's a big part of today's threat. Uh, yeah, this storm is currently moving 50 miles per hour to the northeast right now. Uh, it is, again, for White County. Uh, that's uh, near Brookston and Monticello right there. Uh, the storm right now is moving through Fowler. Uh, that is where we're currently locating it. But, again, at 50 miles per hour, and I'll switch back to our reflectivity. Those are those reds and greens you're used to seeing. Uh, again, you can see very clearly here that we have that storm centered again just to the south and west, uh, east of Fowler here moving very quickly into White County. Uh, this storm has been being tracked for a while. We've had some warnings on this since it was in Illinois. It has uh, at times produced some spin ups as it would appear. We basically define a spin up as a, a circulation within a storm and it can be long lived too. that circulation within that storm, but it doesn't always produce a tornado the entire time. Sometimes tornadoes will spin up briefly and then they'll dissipate and they'll come back again. And it kind of pulses like that. So that's what we're watching really closely. Again, this is in a line of storms too. So it's not something that, well, it is dark outside, but even in the daylight, it's not something you would see. It's embedded within the stronger wind and rain. And that's one of the concerns we have too. Uh, so, of course, if you're in White County, if you're, if you're near Fowler out here too, if you're anywhere in these polygons, you do need to be in the lowest floor of your house, away from exterior walls and windows, uh, if, if you have a one floor, uh, one story building, uh, to keep yourself safe here. But more importantly, again, what we're seeing is going to be largely what we're going to be watching as a trend tonight. We have a line of storms moving in and we have rotation that will be embedded. I'm going to step back to our uh, radar, our, our computer here to drive the radar for you. We'll keep the wall up there. That seems to be working well for us. I'll walk on there when I see something to point out. I'll pull up our debris tracker. I looked at this just a couple moments ago. Nothing on here stands out right now. That's a good thing uh, because we do not want to, of course, see debris anywhere. Um, but I will say what we're looking for would be a uh, greenish or bluish spot within this overall red color you're seeing and that would indicate that there is some kind of uh, a not raindrop or natural matter within a storm cloud. Um, so something we're watching closely will be that. Now I'll switch back to our reflectivity too and we'll just take a look. Actually we'll switch to velocity since we were just looking at reflectivity and uh, it's becoming a little clearer now. Uh, I'm looking at this area right here. That's where we appear to have some rotation within the storm. You have that brighter green and, and bluish color here next to that brighter reddish color. That is where this storm is likely rotating uh, the best right now. So this is what we'd call a couplet. Again, this is moving to the northeast. I'll zoom in a little closer. Let's get some more places on the map so we can place this out for you better. Uh, again, that is to the south and east of Fowler though. We're going to take a closer look now that this storm is uh, showing us a little more on our radar. So if you're in Oak Grove, that would have just passed by you. We're looking at to the uh, 
northeast uh, of Oak Grove right now. Moving in the direction of Round Grove, looks like it will pass along 65 to the north of Round Grove. What I'm looking at here is, is the motion of the storm kind of going like this. So it's likely to pass north of Round Grove. Now, Round Grove, you are within this warning. You do need to head to your safe place immediately. I mean, this is just minutes away from you. Uh, if you're in Oak Grove, you have to be in your safe place right now. The rotation is actually just passing beyond you too. But what you can see here, this brighter blue color and that brighter pink color, that's our couplet. Our tornado would be right around here if there is a tornado being produced by this storm right now. We just got an update. This isn't actually, uh, sometimes our radar has a tough time with strong winds, especially when it's far away. Uh, kind of an artifact of the radar here. But still, this is our area of rotation we're watching very closely as it moves northeast uh, as, at about 50 miles per hour. Very fast moving storm at that. We're going to zoom in a little closer too. And again, I give you a, a better idea of what we're looking at in terms of positioning. It looks like we've got Highway 18 there. It's about to cross the county line at Highway 18. As this storm continues to move, it looks like it will cross again 65. Uh, north of Round Grove there, and uh, that is going to be its next stopping point. I'll put a tracker on this for us too, uh, so we can track it out a little farther to see where it's going. And as I mentioned before, and I'll pull up reflectivity while we do this, you can see it is a, a part of a, a larger trend of messy weather. You know, that's not a, a classic. Uh, uh, we call it a supercell. It's not a classic supercell right there. That's a, that's a messy line of storms, and that's what we're going to be dealing with this evening, these uh, rotations within lines of storms. So uh, give me a moment while I pull up our tracker, and we're going to take a closer look at exactly uh, what we're seeing, and we're going to time this out for you, too. Uh, our storm right now is moving at 50 miles per hour to the northeast. All of our storms tonight will be fast movers. And by the way, the damaging wind threat is going to be very substantial as well. It's not just a tornado threat here. And if we plan this out for the next 45 minutes, these are the locations that are going to be next in line. Uh, we talked about Brookston right here, Monticello as well. Kenneth, you're not in the warning out there, but that is a location that is in the path of this eventually. And once again, this is an embedded rotation, which means you can't clearly see a hook. I'm sure you've heard us talk about hooks before, but when you have these lines of storms, all the precipitation, it kind of just gets in the way. That said, you can have a couple different updrafts that are rotating. That's essentially uh, what you need to create a tornado. That's really all a tornado is. And those updrafts can be embedded within these areas of precipitation. And that's why it's important to use velocity when we're uh, looking at these, uh, these signatures on radar. Talked about Round Grove too, uh, 949. I'm seeing it's about 944 now. So Round Grove again, that's only about five minutes away from you, Brookston. You have about uh, 15 minutes, but when I say you have 15 minutes, you do need to head to your safe place now. Let's not wait 15 minutes and go down there. This is a, a serious situation. We've had tornadoes today across Illinois. We've had tornadoes in Missouri, Iowa, some of them quite large. And the atmosphere, as we've seen today, is very well primed to produce severe weather. And that's why I'm urging you to, to take this very seriously and, and don't give yourself uh, you know, any any extra time to run around and grab this or that, you do need to head to your safe place immediately, especially uh, for those locations that are within our red polygons, our tornado warnings. Now, I mentioned before, Kenneth, you're not in the warning. That's a location where you need to be getting prepared, though, right now, because that would be next in line. It's something we have to watch very closely because that potential for the tornado warning to be extended, you know, that, that could be an area that does see a warning coming next. But right now, it is primarily southeast of Fowler extending out to Towards around Brookston and into White County. We just got an update on a reflectivity. I'm going to step off and we're going to keep this up here, but I'm going to pull up our velocity again because that's going to be our best friend today, uh, tracking these tornadoes that are kind of embedded. And once again, we're, it looks like we're about to get a velocity update. Haven't got a new one yet, but when the radar uh, gives you a reflectivity update, it's scanning for velocity around the same time too, so we can expect that to come in here in a second. Uh, again, our area of rotation, a little messy here. Like I said, it's not the classic look that we would typically typically see, but you can tell right here there is something going on and that's our rotation. Once again, uh, now moving to the east of Atkinson there. It's to the northeast of Oak Grove and it's almost due west of Round Grove. I'm expecting it to cross uh, Highway or I-65 here north of Round Grove and continue moving northeast uh, in the path of that down the line a little bit. We're looking at uh, Chalmers, I hope I pronounced that right. Monticello's down the line there too and it's likely to follow this path uh, just north of some of the towns on our map here. 
Once again, velocity is going to be our best friend. I was explaining a second ago that we're not going to see the classic hook signature because we're talking about lines of storms. So it's going to be important to use our velocity and, and really get details based off of what we're seeing within the storm using our radar that's measuring wind speeds. So that's what we're looking at right here. Again, it's going to be a couple minutes between each update and we're going to keep this uh, keep an eye on this very closely. And while we wait for our next update, I'm going to step off here for a second. I'm going to take a look at our correlation coefficient. That's a fancy way of saying debris tracker. And what we'd be looking for are some brighter spots within this overall red color. Now you may be saying, okay, I'm, I'm seeing a few spots, something like down here. That's actually likely dust and some dirt getting pushed away on the, on the leading edge of the storm. But what we'd be looking for is a color like that, very obviously planted in these uh, overall general red colors. And, and all we're looking at here on our debris tracker is the radar, it's sampling an area within the storm. And it's saying, all right, raindrops here, there, raindrops drops everywhere, it's going to color it red. Now if there was debris, what the radar would be doing is it'd be saying raindrops here, uh, dust here, you know, perhaps some splinters out here, and it's going to say these things don't match up. They're not reflecting the same way, and that's when it plants that uh, brighter green or blue color within the radar. That's our debris signature, which we're not seeing right now, and that's a very good thing. Let's hop back to our velocity. I'm most interested in our velocity because that's what's going to give us a look inside the storm, especially on a day when we're not going to catch that uh, classic hook signature, as I was explaining, but we will take a look and you can see for yourself on reflectivity. Uh, it is a bit of a mess. These aren't the easiest days to track tornadoes, but that's why we have our velocity. And what I'm seeing here is, uh, is perhaps a little bit of interference on radar, but potentially we could have an area or two of rotation here. We're going to have to wait for a few more updates, but I'll, I'll point out what I'm looking at here. And, and sometimes our radar, again, has a tough time. We're a little bit farther away from our radar site out here near White County, but uh, what we're seeing is definitely some rotation going on here. I'm not seeing anything that would suggest that there is for sure a tornado on the ground, and it's very hard to tell that on radar unless you have that debris signature. But there is certainly a mesocyclone, and that's the storm spinning a couple thousand feet up. You need that mesocyclone cyclone to produce a tornado. And as long as a mesocyclone is present, which it is here, you have that potential to produce a tornado. And that's why we're concerned about this storm. That's why the National Weather Service warned it, and, and very smartly so. And once more, this center of rotation looks like it's passing now just to the northwest of Round Grove. I expect it to cross I-65 and continue moving to the northeast. Now, our storm is beginning to move out of our frame, so let me adjust our frame for us here so we can keep on following this storm closely. And this warning, again, for White County as the this storm progresses to the northeast. We're going to zoom out a little bit too and just get a broader view of this and, and get a look at what else is happening too really quickly and we'll jump back on this. But this is all part of a much larger severe weather threat that is going to be impacting the state over the next several hours. You can see that line of storms right now, it extends all the way down towards uh, Champaign, Illinois, actually all the way into southern Illinois. And one of the things that we're going to be watching in addition to this tornado threat is a damaging wind threat. And that's why you're seeing a lot more of these yellow, yellow polygons that extend all the way out into central Illinois. This storm could be producing wind gusts that are up to 80 miles per hour. That would be just as damaging as a weak tornado, and that's our primary concern for the entire state. Now, we do have tornado warnings. That threat is going to be greatest across the western portion of the state for the next few hours, but even after these tornado warnings may expire, it's the damaging wind threat that will carry us through the rest of the evening and is of equal concern, especially as these storms eventually make it into the metro area likely in the next hour or so. So let's jump back on our tornado warning. Wanted to give you an idea of what else is going on because this is a complex kind of weather day. It's not just one storm. It's not just one line. We have a couple different segments in here that are threatening us and certainly producing severe weather and have had a history of producing severe weather too. So let's jump back to that tornado warning. Let's see if we have a new frame and we do have a severe storm warning now as well and that is included. Uh, you can see that yellow box kind of uh, next to our red polygon that we were looking at. Again, that red polygon is your tornado warning. That yellow one is your severe storm warning. Let me get some details on our severe storm warning here for you really quickly, and we're going to take a look at what the National Weather Service is seeing within this storm. I presume it's going to be damaging wind gusts, almost without a doubt. Uh, 60 mile per hour wind gusts and quarter sized hail. So they are seeing some hail in the radar. Uh, some of what we were looking at could have been uh, discerned as hail, so that's, that's certainly no surprise there. And that warning is in effect uh, for areas near Oxford or Otter 
Colorbine there. Uh, this storm is also warned for Carroll County here in north central Indiana and uh, northern Tippecanoe County as well. You can see that yellow box infringes on some of those counties. Uh, we're going to jump back to our tornado warning here though. Again, this storm is continuing to move at 50 miles per hour to the northeast. It is uh, in effect for White County and White County alone right now. We'll switch back to our velocity and get an idea of what's going on inside the storm. And once again, this is uh, not surprising. I'm going to point out what I'm looking at here in a second. I'm going to zoom in a little closer though so it's easier for you to see at home. Uh, not surprising to see what we're seeing here. You have a weak rotation, though certainly rotation there for sure. And this storm is continuing to move northeast. Big Creek, you have to be in your safe place right now. This is going to pass very close to you as it continues on its way in the direction of Monticello and eventually Indiana Beach. Every location you're seeing on the map here is within the tornado warning. So if you're seeing your town on this map right now, you do have to head to your safe place. No, no ifs or buts or whens. You have to head down there now. That's the lowest floor of your house. A basement's ideal. And if you say you live in a one floor house, head to an interior room. Go away from those exterior walls. Don't stand near windows. Of course, it's always attractive to look outside and see what's happening. Look, it's nighttime. You're not going to see anything. It's raining hard. Do the smart thing. Head to that interior room. Head to a safe place. We've already seen some large tornadoes today. We don't want any kind of tragedy here. So do the safe thing and, and head to the safe place of your house. Now, if you're listening to us, you're already doing the first thing, and that's staying updated. So. Glad to have you here. Now we're keeping this storm uh, very close in, in our sights as it continues to move again close to Big Creek, likely just north of Big Creek, and will continue to move in the direction of Monticello in Indiana Beach. And I was explaining before, what we're looking at here is our wind velocity, and this gives us a look inside the storm. Uh, these red colors, this indicates wind that's going away from the radar. The green colors, that indicates wind that's coming towards the radar. When you have some of these colors really close to each other, like right here, that indicates wind that very uh, in close proximity proximity very close to each other is moving away and to the radar. Uh, and what we're seeing basically is, you know, in that case you have a rotation because when you have something spinning, some of that wind is moving away, some of it's moving towards the radar. And, and that's why this, uh, this view on our radar is so useful. I'll show you the other reason it's useful right now and, and we're going to jump to our reflectivity so you can see the entire storm. There's not a lot to see in the way of what would be your typical uh, hook as we like to talk about it. We're not seeing a hook because this is a line of storms and a lot of our rotation tonight will be embedded within storms and that's an important thing to mention because uh, again that's why we're using velocity you're not going to be able to step outside and, and necessarily see a tornado regardless of it being nighttime or not because we have rain and, and just a cluster of storms that's impacting the state right now and uh, this cell in particular. So this tornado warning is in effect for White County. Let's put a tracker back on that and we'll get an idea of where it will be headed next since it's about halfway through this tornado warning. And if we put that tracker on again, it's moving to the northeast at 50 miles per hour. We're going to get an idea of where it's headed next, even beyond the warning. Uh, so here we are. This is about 45 minutes out. We'll place it. That seems logical here. Um, and these locations are in the path. Big Creek. We just talked about this. 10 forwards. Uh, it may be a little closer than that, too. You do have to be in your safe place here in Big Creek. Uh, 10 4 p.m. is when that storm is at, at a safe bet going to reach you. I believe it'll reach before then. Monticello, it's in your path. Burnettsville as well. Uh, Burnettsville, you're actually out of the warning right here, but these are locations. We'll say Burnettsville and even Logansport. A Royal Center is included in that as well. Those are locations where you don't need to be heading down to your basement this second but you should be getting prepared to do that in case this warning is extended. We've seen this tornado warning in effect for uh, at least the past half hour, if not longer. This storm cell itself has been warned off and on for a while, and that means, you know, it's got a history of producing rotation. Sometimes that rotation weakens, sometimes it comes back, and that's important to mention because some of these storms are going to function like that today, where you don't have a consistent rotation the entire time, and you may just be a severe storm warning at times, but you have to watch it as it progresses through the area and, and that's going to be the case with many of the storms we see this evening. In addition to this being a tornado worn storm, it's also producing 60 mile per hour wind gusts. We certainly have to be concerned about that. Uh, that is going to cause damage as well. A quarter sized hail is also within the warning here and we're going to take another look at velocity. 
And I have good news here, actually, uh, with this latest scan. Uh, we call it a scan whenever we get an update on our radar because, of course, the radar is scanning the, uh, the clouds and whatnot. Um, I'm going to actually jump back. We just switched different radar. There we go. Well, you know, one of the challenges, we're kind of far from the radar right now, so what's happening is the radar beam is hitting some precipitation that's uh, much higher in the cloud, and it's tougher to pick up on those uh, uh, tornado signatures when you're surveying air that's up here and the tornado's down here. But I will say regardless, our rotation does look a little weaker. That's a great sign for us. We're not seeing the same kind of tight couplet like we did before. Uh, we're not seeing as, as strong a mesocyclone. So this storm, as I mentioned, it's been pulsing a little bit. You know, that, that rotation gets tighter, gets a little weaker. Right now it looks like it's getting a little weaker. Uh, heading in the direction of uh, Chalmers right here. And again, in the direction of Monticello eventually. But it's a little more diffuse. It looks like we do have our mesocyclone right in here. But it's certainly not as uh, pretty looking, you could say, as it was a few minutes ago. That's a sign that our storm is perhaps just beginning to weaken a little bit, at least in terms of the rotation. But that's not to say it's over yet. And of course, if you're within the polygon here, uh, again, that's Indiana Beach, Monticello, Chalmers, Brookston, uh, you, Monticello, of course, you do need to be in your safe place. Now, I will say, uh, we'll look at some areas that we were just talking about moments ago. Uh, Round Grove, uh, you should stay in your safe place, but it looks like you're about to be in the clear. Fowler, Otterbein, we mentioned those locations earlier. You are in the clear now, too. Uh, we are looking a little bit to the south and west of this, where the storm has since passed. Uh, let's see, Oak Grove, you're in the clear as well. The storm has moved through your area. In fact, you're out of the warning for that reason as well. Uh, Round Grove, give it, give it two, three more minutes, and you'll be in the clear as well. Things are beginning to improve in that area. But we still have this uh, warning in effect, and, and by the way, you're seeing all these funky colors as I switch uh, our, our positioning here because we're, we're kind of in between a few radars, so what our system is doing is it's trying to grab the most ideal radar to sample the storm, but again, it's a little difficult because we are far from these radar sites. It doesn't give us as precise a measurement as it could. But uh, we can still see what we're dealing with here. That tornado warning in effect for White County. Let me get an uh, idea of how long it's in effect for, too, because this is uh, certainly then 15. Okay, we got about 15 more minutes here. The National Weather Service is likely to make a decision here pretty soon as to whether they want to extend it or not. And that's something we're going to watch very closely. We're also going to take a look out across the entire region here and, and just get an idea of what else is going on. We have a confirmed tornado right now that is uh, in south uh, eastern Illinois. We're going to be watching this segment here uh, very closely too because this is going to move into our area over the next, I mean, that could be the next 30 minutes. So uh, some of those areas around Terre Haute, uh, stretching down to Vincennes, you know, these are locations that we're going to need to keep a close eye on. And certainly uh, you should be prepared to, again, even though you're not within the severe stuff right now, you need to be prepared. Everyone here in central Indiana, I understand most of you do not have warnings overhead. Of course, these are mainly in Illinois, but we all do need to be very prepared because that potential is just very evident today that we could have those uh, powerful wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour. There could be some tornadoes. And you can see this line of storms stretching all the way out to Effingham and all the way through. Uh, again, we were talking about Monticello. These, this line of storms, these storms are going to cross the entire state. Now, the tornado threat will lessen a little bit, but that damaging wind threat is going to stick with us. And so we need to keep a very close eye and stay vigilant tonight. We're going to step right here. We're going to take a look at our, our radar and, and see a few more products. Uh, we're going to take a look again at this one morning too and just get a, another uh, idea of what's going on as we've likely gotten a little bit of new data. Uh, we're actually seeing some, we're seeing some of that pink there too. I'm going to point that out. Uh, it is right there near, let me take the lightning off near Brookston. Uh, you can see some of that pink on radar. That would not surprise me. The storm is uh, warned as well. This, this yellow polygon out here, that's our severe storm warning. And that's in effect for a hail that uh, is up to quarter size. And, and when we have this pink color, that's more particles in the cloud reflecting off the radar. That's a sign that we could be talking about hail. So in Brookston, don't be surprised if you do hear a few pings on your roof. That's heading your direction. Delphi, you'd be next in the path for that. And in terms of our tornado warning, we're going to switch back to our velocity and get an idea of what we're looking at inside the storm. Once again, we're not going to see those classic hooks so much today. We, we may, but because we're looking at a line of storms, it's going to be tougher to see those. Uh, I see an interesting feature now, too. It did appear that our rotation was weakening momentarily, but you know, um, let me get back to that, that better radar site. I like this one more here. Uh, Big Creek, we've been talking about you for a while. 
it may not be much, but we are seeing at least a little bit of perhaps tighter rotation here. It's very difficult to say, again, because our radar is scanning a bit higher in the cloud. But it does appear that, again, again, this storm is tornado worn. It does appear that if there is a tornado, it would be right here around Big Creek, heading in the direction of Monticello right now. Likely only about five or so minutes out from Monticello, and it will continue moving to the northeast. Bell Center, Burnettsville, it would pass within your general vicinity, and that's something that you need to be prepared for. You know, Burnettsville, you're just outside the warning here, but if you're watching, I would head down to my safe place now just to be safe because uh, this storm, you're, next, uh, you're, next, uh, you're the next stop. That's where it's headed for in about 15 more minutes. Indiana Beach and Monticello, you absolutely have to be in your safe place right now. I expect this storm, it could pass very close uh, to the center of Monticello as it continues on its way to the northeast. And these storms are moving fast today, guys. They're moving 50 miles per hour. At least this one is here. We have a ton of wind energy in the atmosphere, and that's really pushing these storms along. I just got an update, and uh, again, uh, tough to say exactly what our radar sampling here. It's, it's far from the radar, so we're going to switch to our other site. But there is certainly at least some rotation within the cloud, and that's something that we need to keep an eye on very closely right now. If you want to go back to the wall, I can jump in and show you something. I have meteorologist Alyssa Andrews here with me, too. We've been watching this very closely. She's been monitoring for storm reports, uh, communicating with the National Weather Service, and uh, we're working as a team to keep you updated with the latest. And, uh, we're going to pull you down to the second sounds good. tornado warning right here that's just on the Illinois side of the Wabash Valley. And so we're expecting to see that storm in particular make its way to the Indiana side of the Wabash Valley, just south of Terre Haute by 10.30 p.m., and that's that's the latest on the timing of that storm. So and that's going to be kind of something next to watch out for. Yeah, for sure. And our pink boxes too, uh, as you mentioned, is heading towards the Wabash Valley. These pink boxes indicate storms that have confirmed tornadoes within them. So uh, the way we run our radar, and this is the way that we do it, we want to make it very clear when there's a tornado that's been confirmed within a storm. But any tornado warned storm, you do need to obviously take shelter. You need to play it safe. You need to do the right thing, and that's head down to the lowest floor of your house. But when you have a tornado confirmed in a storm, we want to make it very clear what we're looking at, and that's why we have these uh, pink boxes. So these are also tornado warnings, but have that extra level of urgency, of course. Uh, severe storm warning looks like was just issued for parts of uh, western Indiana here uh, along 70 there heading towards Crawfordsville. We'll take a look at that too but we're going to keep a very close eye on the storm as it approaches Sullivan. Uh, that storm we're going to actually let's zoom in on that and just get a good uh, get a good idea of what's going on there because that storm's been tornado warned and uh, it's had a confirmed tornado for a little while too. That's an important one just to just to give you a heads up and this storm has uh, a, you can see very strong rotation um, those green and red colors right here, that's very indicative of what may be a tornado ongoing. Of course, the storm is warned. It has been confirmed to be producing a tornado. This is still in Illinois, okay? You can see the river here takes you into Indiana. Sullivan is, is downstream of this. Uh, we'll put a tracker on it, though, so you can see how far away Sullivan is, and, and we can get you prepared. This warning is not in effect for anywhere in Indiana yet, but it is a serious storm. And we want to make sure you're prepared. We want to give you the heads up before you need to, uh, before you're in a bad situation, essentially. We want to keep you safe here. So let me get an idea of how fast the storm is moving. Uh, and this one's moving northeast at 60 miles per hour. Again, a good representation of the storms today and, and just how much wind energy is in the atmosphere, how fast these storms are being uh, uh, moving along here. So we'll drag this out. This will be about the next uh, 45 minutes of time. Robinson, that's in Illinois, so is Riverton, but Sullivan, that's here in Indiana, it's 1042-ish, and it may be a little quicker than that because I've noticed some of these storms are speeding up a bit, but if you're in Sullivan, uh, I would be prepared for this to move in, what is it, 1004 now? In a half hour, this storm may be bearing down on your town, and Farmersburg, again, that's a little out of the way here, but still, uh, give it about 40 or so minutes, and in Farmersburg, this storm will be uh, in your backyard too, so we'll be watching this storm closely, there is a confirmed tornado on it. If anything changes, we're going to jump back to it. But just wanted you give and wanted to give you an early heads up. If you're around Sullivan, Farmersburg, or anywhere out here in the southern parts of the Wabash Valley, uh, south of Terre Haute, because these are locations that may be in for some storms next. And we're going to jump back to our reflectivity, give you an idea of everything that's going on. We're going to get an update on our uh, tornado warning we were talking about not too long ago as well in White County. And uh, let's take a look over there, see what's new. And right now, we still have that warning in effect. Uh, very tough to see exactly what is going on within the storm, again, because we're kind of far from our radar site, but 
Uh, it appears the greatest area of rotation has now moved to the northeast of Monticello. I haven't seen anything from I haven't seen anything from the National Weather Service that suggests they're going to uh, extend this. Uh, Alyssa, if you see anything, please let us know. Uh, but right now, it does appear that this warning uh, is going to be set to expire in about 10 minutes. We'll see if it gets extended. Our area of rotation now would be along 39 uh, north of Monticello, continuing to move in the direction of, uh, again, Royal Center. This is going to pass north of Logansport if it continues. If the warning is extended at least, I expect that would be north of Logansport. But it is largely moving out of our area now. So we'll take one more look at it and we'll jump on to some of our other severe weather. But there we are, Indiana Beach. If there is a tornado, it would be right in your area. You need to be in your safe place. I, I fully hope you're there right now. Bell Center, that's one of our last areas in the corner of this warning. It will be headed towards you next. If you're not already in your safe place and you really should be there now, you do need to head down there right now. Lowest floor of your house, basement's ideal, or at least a room that does not have exterior walls or windows. That's where you're going to be safest. Uh, this rotation, though, I will say, a bit diffuse. It's, it's not really a pretty picture. Uh, what we're looking at is more of a general rotation in the storm. But it's impossible to say whether there is a tornado or not just based off of radar in this case. Looks like we did just get a severe storm warning extended a little farther out. We'll take a look at that. That's also a sign. You know, I'd be doubtful the National Weather Service extends this tornado warning. Uh, but we'll take a look at the severe storm warning and, and just give you an idea of what we're looking at. Logansport, Peru, you guys are both within this severe storm warning. So let, let's take a look at it and see what you're in for. And I expect it's going to be strong wind. Uh, I'm going to get the details from the National Weather Service right now. And what we're looking at here is a severe storm warning that will be in effect until 1045. 60 mile per hour wind gusts are the concern. Again, that's Logansport, Peru, and uh, these areas uh, out here just to the east of White County. And this storm warning, of course, is still in effect because all evening long we're going to be watching this strong line of storms and you can see them very clearly on our reflectivity around Monticello, Delphi, and this line is going to continue to move to our east here. If we take a look a little bit farther to the south and we're looking really mainly at the Indiana, Illinois border here. This is along I-74 just south of Attica, just north of Rockville. Uh, we're looking at these reds and oranges and yellows. Uh, Vetersburg, you're included in this. Covington, you're included in this warning too. These are storms that are in a cluster right now and certainly producing very strong and potentially damaging wind gusts. So we'll uh, look at this severe storm warning. It's uh, for 60 mile per hour wind gusts and penny sized hail. Again, it's this entire polygon we're looking at right here. Uh, Fountain Park, Vermilion, and Warren counties are included in this warning. Again, that's a, going to go on for about 40-ish minutes, a little bit less than that. 60 mile per hour wind gusts are the concern, and that's what we're looking at basically all evening long. Even when there are not tornado warnings, it's the wind that we need to be concerned about and the wind that we are going to be keeping a very close eye on, especially as some of these storms begin to pr uh, approach the metro area a little bit farther down the line here. Now, if we take a broad look, you're basically seeing right now everything across the state. We have some tornado warnings in uh, far northern Indiana near Gary out there, but we have severe storm warnings that stretch all the way down to about Effingham and all the way up into the northern part of the state. That's your classic line of storms, as we like to talk about. And when you have these lines of storms, it's more conductive. Oh, we just got a tornado warning update. When you have lines of storms, I'll finish that thought while I get data. It's conductive for pulling a very high amount of wind energy in the mid atmosphere and driving it down to the surface. Now, here's something we want to keep a very close eye on this tornado warning here. Uh, we were just talking about this. So Sullivan, hope we were able to give you an early heads up. Uh, Alyssa came in and, and made us aware of this storm. Glad she did because this is now being extended into Indiana this morning and a very good move by the Weather Service, in my opinion, because what we're looking at here is a storm that uh, still is approaching the state. They're giving you some lead time uh, and we're going to get an eye on exactly how far out this is. But I, I would presume you have at least 10 to 15 minutes before the storm crosses the river. Again, uh, kudos to the National Weather Service for giving us such good lead time on this. And once again, it's these areas shaded in the red polygon. We have a confirmed tornado right now in Illinois. At least that's what it was warned for. Our tornado warning is uh, not assuming that there will be a tornado on the ground. But of course, there is the potential for that tornado to continue on the ground. And it's that red polygon I'm looking at for us right there. 
Let me get some additional information because last we checked, it was moving at 60 miles per hour. Uh, here's our warning, by the way, for Clay, Green, and Sullivan counties. Sullivan County will impact you first, of course. That'll go until 11 p.m. We'll take a closer look just to see who is uh, exactly in the path of this. And as we do, again, I'm going to get more information on just how quickly the storm is moving. Uh, Riverton, that's right on the border of Illinois and Indiana. You need to absolutely be in your safe place right now. That storm is going to bear down on you very shortly. Sullivan, Haddon, Wright, and Linton, those are all locations that are firmly in the middle of this warning. Very important that you head down to your safe place right now, too. You have about 15 minutes, but you do not want to dilly-dally. This is a strong storm. There's a tornado that is, uh, has been confirmed, at least at some point, and this is moving very quickly right now, around 60 miles per hour into Indiana. We're going to put a tracker on that, but I also wanted to show you our reflectivity, uh, excuse me, our velocity, and you can see that kind of mess of greens and reds there just to the southwest of Robinson. So let's put a tracker on that. We're going to take a look at exactly the timing on this storm, and once we put our tracker on it, we'll be able to talk more about some of those uh, other towns in Indiana that are going to be in the line of this. And certainly, I mentioned this before, but uh, our weather today is, is very, very volatile. We have a lot of wind energy in the atmosphere. There is a lot for these storms to feed off of. It's not one of those days where we're just going to see a storm or two. It's one of those days where we seriously do have to keep an eye on every storm for the next several hours, uh, a real severe weather outbreak for us. And we'll put this tracker out for about the next 45 minutes. I queue it up with the direction of the storm and and here's what we're looking at uh, Gill that's a good starting spot for Indiana uh, you're only about 13 minutes away from this storm as I mentioned 15 minutes is about the best we got here Gill you're 13 minutes away from the center of the storm absolutely time to head to your safe place anyone within the red polygon here uh, Sullivan we talked about that that is only about what is that 1031 you have a little less than 20 minutes before that's on top of you that's that's not 20 minutes ahead to your safe place now is the time to do that and what we're looking at farther to the north and east as well are places like Duggar, Linton, and Bloomfield. You know, we have some more time because, again, the National Weather Service gave us a good lead up to this storm. But Duggar around 1038, Linton around 1043. And these, again, are the timings, the storms on top of you. Not the time you should head down to your basement. That's when the storm's on top of you. And Bloomfield, you still likely have around 40 minutes before that storm's on top of you. We can see that rotation here. It's messy. Uh, that's sometimes a sign that the radar sites far away that's the case here uh, but it's also a sign that we do have a lot going on within this storm and that we have at, at best, we just have a strong circulation within the storm, but certainly we have had reports of tornadoes on the ground in this storm cell. And a lot of the, the storm cells we've seen today, because the environment is so good to produce tornadoes, a lot of the storms we've seen today have produced more long-lived circulations, and several tornadoes to our west, to our south today, have been long-lived. And that's something we're concerned about here, and that's a big reason. Again, the National Weather Service did a great job giving us some extra lead time on. So let's take another look uh, a little closer at some of the other storms out here and we'll jump back to this one but we just want to make sure that we're not missing anything and that we have a good survey of the entire area you know before we were just talking about uh, some of the severe storms in addition to tornado warnings there's a lot of those out there right now you know it, it's a big weather day guys we do have a lot of uh, activity in terms of severe weather whether it's tornadoes or wind and right now we are talking about tornadoes of course but the wind is just as concerning. Now, we do have that tornado warning, which is still set to expire very briefly here in White County. Uh, that is now a severe storm warning, which has been extended east. I'll, I'll show you what I'm looking at here, just so you have a, a better idea on the map. Here's our tornado warning. That storm has now moved out of the tornado warning, but that chance for damaging wind will exist uh, into places like Logansport, Peru. Uh, so you guys know we were just talking about that. You were in the line for some of those stronger winds. This line extends farther to the south, too. If, if you're in Crawfordsville, you know what? We're going to take a closer look at that storm, because I'm seeing a lot of lightning. And you know what lightning means? And not only is lightning dangerous, but it's a really good indicator for a meteorologist that the storm is a healthy updraft. And the updraft is uh, what basically fuels the storm. And you can see that right now along 74 out there, 
We're going to take a closer look at this storm just briefly and jump back to our tornado warning as it approaches us. Fountain Park, Vermilion, and Warren counties. Uh, 60 mile per hour wind gusts and penny sized hail. Wouldn't be surprised if the hail's perhaps getting a little bigger there, uh, but that warning is in effect for you until 1045. So now that we have an idea of what else is going on, we're going to jump back to our uh, more imminent threat. That's this uh, tornado warned storm as it begins to approach Indiana. It is getting awfully close to the river here and awfully close to the Indiana border. Uh, it looks like the National Weather Service cut back the back end of that warning. So parts of Illinois are in the clear, not parts of Indiana right now. And that's why we're keeping a very, very close eye on this. Um, and let's jump to our uh, let's jump to some of our uh, other radar products because it's tough to see in our uh, reflectivity exactly what's going on here. And, and part of that reason is because uh, what we're seeing is is again a cluster of storms. We have a cluster of storm updrafts. Uh, now, what I will say is that, and this radar is a little bit smoothed out. What I'm what I'm seeing is we this may be a hook actually right here. Uh, and if I look at a higher quality radar, I'll have a better idea of exactly what's going on. Uh, good news is that I have a, a high quality radar right here. So you're hearing me talk. Uh, you're looking at the TV screen. I'm looking at our our uh, very precise radar uh, on my iPad and I'm going to let you know exactly what we're seeing uh, on that higher quality radar and what I'm seeing right now is uh, very likely very likely a hook there this storm could be in the midst of the storm looks like it may be trying to get its act together trying to recycle a little bit and sometimes storms do that as they uh, they progress onwards. So essentially what we're seeing is certainly rotation right now. This storm is absolutely rotating. The question is, is it producing a tornado right now? And if it is, it appears it's going to try to produce a new one, but it may be, it may be in the process of, of handing one a tornado off to a uh, to another right now. So that's something that it's tough to say just based off of radar, but it, that could be happening at this present moment just south of Robinson, Illinois. Now we have our river right here, okay? And that's going to move, uh, well, the storm is moving across the river within the next 10 minutes. Gill is going to be one of the first places in Indiana to be impacted, and you have to be in your safe place right now, Gill. And, and by the way, if you're watching this and you have family and friends around Sullivan or in this area, I should have mentioned this before, but call them, you know, be a good neighbor, make sure because it's nighttime, they're awake, they're aware. I hate nocturnal tornadoes. I absolutely hate them because people go to sleep. They sleep on the top floor of the house. You know, that's, that's a normal thing to do. But when you have this kind of breaking weather and you have tornadoes, those are the most dangerous places to be. So make sure you're calling family and friends if they're within any of these paths make sure that they're aware because that's always my biggest fear is that someone's not aware of the severe weather that will impact them. So help us out. Help us get the message out to your friends and family. Let's get an update on this storm and take a look at the velocity here uh, because that's what we're going to be watching most closely. Um, well, we did just get an update on that tornado warning uh, that we've been talking about in Indiana. It is now warned as there is still a confirmed tornado. That's right, a confirmed tornado on the ground right now. Uh, they have mentioned it is a particularly dangerous situation. They have worded this, a confirmed large and extremely dangerous tornado is located over Palestine or near Robinson, moving east at 65 miles per hour. I'm going to be honest with you guys, the National Weather Service does not use that warning every day. That's a very, very uh, dire message they're getting out here. Um, and it does appear, I'm looking at the rotation right now, if we zoom in, Looks like it's just to the east of Robinson. Uh, right here is where I'm most concerned. This is a very, very serious storm. I cannot stress that enough. The National Weather Service, again, they save that wording for some of the highest end uh, tornado threats. This is uh, qualifying as one of those. So our rotation right here near Lamont, that's Illinois. That is moving to the east northeast right now. Gil, you're next in line. Head down to the basement right now. Haddon, Paxton, Sullivan, you're a little bit a ways away. You, you have perhaps 10 minutes before that circulation is right over you. Do not wait. Head to the basement, the lowest floor of your house, away from exterior walls and windows. This is a very serious situation. We have a confirmed large tornado on the ground moving into your area. This is certainly a situation that you have to take very, very seriously. And if you're watching this and you have family that's in these areas, Give them a call, make sure they're awake, make sure they're aware, uh, and, and make sure they know what to do, and that's to head to those safe places. So we're gonna take a look here on radar and see who else is in the line of this. We're gonna put a tracker on you. This is not a situation I want anyone to waste time with. I wanna make sure that everyone is ready and is prepared 
in case this warning is extended, uh, to go to that safe place. And we're going to put a tracker on this as this storm, again, it's moving 65 miles per hour. That does not give you a lot of time. You know, that's moving as fast as a car on the highway here, uh, something that is uh, fast for even a thunderstorm, which will typically see them move on the order of uh, 20 to 50 miles per hour. 65 is a lot. So we're putting the tracker on here. This storm moving to the east northeast right now, and we're going to extend this out for. We'll give it. Uh, we'll, we'll extend it out for about 40 minutes, and you'll see who's in the line in the next 40 minutes. And and what you're seeing here, by the way, is this tracker being dragged out pretty far. That's the amount of coverage this storm will have in the next 40 minutes. So it really gives you an idea of how quickly this storm is moving. If you're in Gill, that's 10:26. That's six minutes have to be in that safe place. This storm is going to pass awfully close to Gill. Uh, Sullivan, the same deal. 1032, that's when the storm's overhead. Linton, 1043. Bloomfield, 1054. Patrick'sburg, 1059. Uh, Patrick'sburg, you're not in this warning. And that's a very good example of places that need to be ready. You're next in line. As this storm is moving very quickly, it is uh, confirmed to be producing a tornado. And it's something that needs to be taken very seriously because we've had a history of tornadoes being produced by this storm. And it would not shock me if this warning is extended beyond what we're seeing right now. Let's take a look exactly, though, where it is. We're going to jump back to our velocity. We're going to take the tracker off. Well, we actually are on our velocity right now. Uh, this is getting awfully close to Riverton. You can see it's right Right there around Lamont. Very tough to say exactly the exact position of the tornado because it's a bit of a mess on our radar. Uh, that's because there's likely so much um, well, wind and, and circulation and power within this storm. But it is there right between Maram, Riverton, Lamont, and you, you have to be taking this seriously. You have to be in your safe place. This is a very dangerous storm. The National Weather Service is using wording that we typically uh, would not use in a normal situation, just given uh, you know the power that we're seeing in this storm. And I'm seeing it a little bit easier here on my higher resolution radar, so I'll try to point that out um, a little better on here for you. But basically what I mentioned before is uh, it's that circulation is just north of Palestine right there. Uh, it, is, it is right here between Lamont, Riverton, Maram, and it's going to cross the river into Indiana here. It'll cross 58. It looks like it will pass just north of Gill, though there is certainly not enough room uh, to be comfortable. You definitely have to be in your safe place if you're in Gill. New Lebanon, same thing, please. Take this seriously. This is a confirmed large tornado. It's going to do damage, and you, the only thing you can do for yourself if you're in the path is, is take those precautions. Lowest floor of your house, remember? Lowest floor of your house, interior room, away from walls and windows. If you got a basement, that's great. That's the best place to be. Uh, a little more clearly here on our radar, we can see that circulation uh, is right here. Again, just south of Maram, just north of Riverton, crossing the river right now. We can see this very clearly now, those greens and reds side by side, especially right here. You see you have those bright blue pixels, those bright red pixels side by side. It is very likely that we do have a tornado ongoing just south of Maram, just north of Riverton, crossing at this exact moment into Indiana, moving east northeast. It's going to continue in this direction, will likely pass just north of Gill. And this storm is very substantial. Uh, New Lebanon likely to pass just north of you as well, but that is far too close for comfort. Let me take a look at radar again. We're going to extend this a little bit farther so that we can see who is going to be next in line, and we can keep you updated. Uh, we'll actually extend it out here, and we're going to take a look again. Um, New Lebanon, or New Lebanon there, it's going to pass likely just to your north. I, I don't like this situation for Sullivan. You have to be in your safe place. Sullivan, it is really, really going to pass very close to you. Again, if we have a tornado, it's likely right there. We may have two separate areas of rotation. It's a little difficult to tell. We'll need another frame on our radar. Uh, but Sullivan, this is moving right in your direction right now, and it's likely to arrive in the next several minutes. So. You have to be in your safe place. Please don't push it. If you're still uh, watching upstairs and you have a safer place to go, go there now, okay? We're, we're talking about what could be life and death here. These are very, very serious storms, and you need to be taking this with the, uh, you know, just very seriously. There's, there's no two ways to put it. Uh, you hear what I'm saying. You hear what the National Weather Service is wording this as, and that's, again, not your typical wording from the National Weather Service. This is a very dangerous storm. 
Other towns in the path of this, uh, Cass and Duggar, you're not in a great spot either. This storm may pass just to your north, but it is way too close for comfort. Uh, Jasonville, you're down the line in this warning as well. Linton, it looks as though it may pass just to your north, but again, far too close for comfort. You need to be in your safe place. You're in the warning right here. Switch City, Lions, uh, you are also within the warning here. And if you're just outside the warning to the east, Worthington, Bloomfield, Freedom, Spencer, you are all in locations that may be impacted next. And watching a little farther down the line, this is being a little safer, but uh, Bloomington and Ellettsville, definitely not out of the woods. Uh, we're going to keep an eye in, on this rotation and see if it remains strong enough uh, that the National Weather Service feels that they want to extend it further than what it is right now. But that's what we're looking at right now. The storm just beginning to cross the river. Uh, I pointed it out before. It is that that circulation. I'll put an arrow on this so you can see what I'm looking at uh, right here, uh, right here. If there was a tornado, it would be. Oh, we just got a new frame right between Riverton and Maram. And no surprise, it is moving just north of Gill now. I mean, this is a very, very clear rotation. There's no second thought watching the storm, exactly what it's doing, where it's going. Uh, so please uh, take these warnings very seriously. We can tell very clearly uh, because of our, our velocity on our radar, we can see that there is a couplet right here to the north of Gill. Very, very close to you, Gill. Very, very close to New Lebanon. You need to be in your safe spot without a doubt and this storm it, it certainly concerns me the strength of it you know if you're in your safe spot that's the best thing you can do you have to be doing that Sullivan I do have some concern this storm will be passing very very close to Sullivan you have likely about five minutes before that's uh, right overhead perhaps even a little bit less this storm is moving very quickly though at 65 miles per hour to the east northeast if you have family and I mentioned this before if you have family friends near New Lebanon near Sullivan give them a call. Make sure they're, they're taking these warnings seriously. Make sure they know what's going on. These are nocturnal tornadoes. You're not going to see them. People go to sleep, of course. Make sure that's the best thing you can do. Make sure for us that uh, somebody is aware you may save a life tonight if you're able to relay a message to someone who may not know or who may not be aware. So this is a very important uh, situation. It's something that really can't be taken more seriously. Uh, this storm around New Lebanon continues to move east northeast. It'll be around Sullivan and it'll eventually pass a little bit to the east of Sullivan. Uh, Paxton as well. You're certainly not out of the woods. I see you on the map there. Um, Benifel, uh, Benefield Corner. I hope I pronounced that right. You know what I'm talking about if, you, uh, if you're there. Uh, you're not out of the woods there either. You definitely need to head to your safe place. Duggar, Wright, Linton, you can see out there uh, all locations that are in the path. Uh, I do not believe we have an extension of this warning yet. We don't, but there is a very clear rotation on this. Uh, it appears we, we actually may have two areas of rotation. It's difficult to say exactly right now, but we certainly have that rotation just to the north of Gill. Now, I'll show you our reflectivity, by the way. Nothing that classic looking at reflectivity. It looks a little messy, but again, we're talking about lines of storms. You can surely see all that lightning. That's a, uh, you know, a sign that this storm is still maintaining a strong updraft. And, uh, and if we take a look at our velocity and our reflectivity, our, our correlation coefficient rather, we're looking for what could be debris. I'm also looking at a higher resolution radar off screen right now to let you know if I see something that is peculiar and concerning. And uh, I can say for sure that we do have, uh, it appears some debris um, being picked up by this storm. Not, not the situation you want to see. It looks like that debris ball is uh, very well correlated. Yeah, all right, so what we're looking at right now, and you can see this on the screen right here, uh, these darker blue colors heading right in the direction of Sullivan, that's our debris tracker picking up some debris. Not the situation that we want to see, but again, it, it goes to show how serious this storm is. This storm is going to pass right through Sullivan right now, it appears. Again, we do have debris being picked up. Radar's indicating that. That's that blue color within the red uh, I was talking about before. It's picking up at least uh, some dust, dirt, maybe some splinters. Uh, something's being lofted into the storm. We just got an update on our velocity. Let's take a close look at that right now. And uh, to no surprise, we are looking at that very strong circulation just outside of Sullivan. 
really dire situation here, Sullivan, you, you need to be in your safe spot right now. If you've been listening, if you've been waiting for it to get close to you, do not wait any longer. Head down to your safe spot. We certainly have a strong uh, couplet here. That's strong rotation. There is debris. This tornado has been confirmed. It seems very, very likely that it is still ongoing on the ground, and it is going to make a very close pass to Sullivan. Uh, not, not a fan of this situation, but that is the situation we're in right now. Um, so Sullivan, please be safe. Uh, this storm will continue moving to the east-northeast. Let's get an idea of who's going to be in the line next because I want to keep you as far ahead of this storm as I can. This is a very dangerous situation for us unfolding right now. Uh, right, you're certainly in, uh, in line for this. That would be a location that I would be uh, absolutely my safe place right now. I do have a little bit of concern about the direction this storm goes because right, uh, Jasonville as well, you are certainly not far from the path of this. Uh, again, this storm is still progressing at 65 miles per hour through parts of southwestern Indiana. Uh, again, this storm too, we just saw debris on this. Uh, there's a very, very tight rotation. Uh, we're going to look to the northeast of Sullivan, Glendora, Head to your safe place if you're not there already. Scotchtown, we're going to hope passes to the north there. It looks like it may by a little bit, but you have to be in your safe place. Duggar, same deal with you. It looks like it may pass just to the north, but you have to be in your safe place right now. I'll look at some other areas. Again, this is just northeast of Sullivan. Uh, Gilmore, you have to be in your safe place. I can't stress this enough. All of these little towns and, and locations, uh, there's just, there isn't any time now. You, you need to be there and you need to be aware of what's headed your direction. Right now, that looks like it may be a strong tornado. Uh, now this uh, looks like our latest scan places the strongest rotation between uh, Glendora and Sullivan. You can see that right here on our radar. And let's take a look at our correlation coefficient, our debris tracker. That still needs to update. Looks like we're going to get another scan, but you can see again very clearly this is one of the worst things that, that we find on radar, and it's when you know there's a tornado ongoing. That's why we have this blue spot here. That's a sign there is debris right now being lifted by this storm. And that looks as though it just passed right through Sullivan, uh, moving just around Glendora, maybe just to the south. We're going to get an update on this frame here in just a second. We refer to this as a debris ball, by the way. So if you hear me say debris ball throughout that term, that, that's what I'm referring to. Not, not a scenario that we like to cover here in meteorology. Um, we're going to take a look at velocity, though, because that's what's telling us really where the strongest rotation is. Uh, Benefield Corner, again, uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right for you. That is right in your backyard there. And certainly, if we put a tracker on this, even just for the next 10 minutes, we're going to see, again, a lot of those smaller towns I was calling out before uh, in the path of this. Uh, well, Gilmore, again, it doesn't look like a very highly populated area, which is good. But if you're between Sullivan, Gilmore, uh, Jasonville, Wright, those are locations that are in the path of this tornado. National Weather Service still uh, warning this as a confirmed tornado. Um, something that, again, uh, there's, there's no two ways about it. This needs to be taken very, very seriously. Uh, not a great situation right now. Um, we do have that uh, very tight couplet on our radar. Um, we haven't got an update on our debris tracker, but you can see that blue spot just south of Sullivan. That's what's really concerning to me. That's a sign that we do have debris. And there is a lot of lightning here. If I take the lightning off, uh, it will still not look like a classic signature. Actually, yikes. Okay, uh, so actually what we are seeing here is more of a classic signature. You have your, your highest reflectivity. You have your hail falling here, and it looks as though what we're seeing here is an actual uh, hook. And the reason you're seeing higher reflectivity here outside Sullivan may very well be because uh, the debris within this storm is reflective, and the radar is going to pick up on that as if it's uh, precipitation too. So here's, here actually is your hook. We're only seeing that because this is a uh, significant situation ongoing right now. We're concerned about this storm moving closer to right in Gilmore. It's moving to the northeast, passed just through Sullivan, very close to Sullivan as well. Uh, I can say, though, at least for some areas like Gill, you're in the clear now. I, I know the tornado warning hasn't expired near you, Gill, but this storm has certainly passed you at this point. Um, and some of those areas to the, uh, to the uh, west as well, Lamont, Huntsville, um, in Illinois. Haddon, you're in the clear as well. Paxton, you're not yet, but it does look like this storm is passing just to your north. Um, but this is certainly not a great signature on radar. I can very clearly see that hook. I'm looking at 
A high resolution radar by my side here, you're seeing uh, our, our regular reflectivity right there. And yes, we are certainly seeing, and here, here's really what I'm looking at and why I'm, why I'm particularly concerned here. And here's how we know we're looking at uh, debris also and not just something random being pulled into the storm. Keep an eye on this spot right here, okay? Watch this, that spot right there, that darker circle, you can see that, that's our reflectivity. That's where the radar's picking up on, uh, you know, that could be rain and hail, but we know it's not because when we put our velocity on there, Right on top of that spot, we have our couplet. We have our green and red colors side by side, okay? We also have our debris right on top of that. And when you have those three things co-located, that is almost the perfect indication that you have a tornado on the ground. Unfortunately, it does look like that did just pass in very close proximity to Sullivan. Uh, we're gonna get an idea of though, where it's headed next because that's what's really important here. And I would not be shocked at all if the National Weather Service decides to extend this warning with just uh, how it is looking right now. Um, so here we are uh, on our, our velocity again. This is our, our wind speeds. Um, this storm is headed in the direction of right right now. Um, we're going to pull it from exactly where it is right now. We're going to uh, basically plan this out for the next 15 minutes for you. Uh, if you're within the pink polygon here, you have to be in your safe place right now. Duggar, Wright, Linton, and especially, especially if you're within this cone, Gilmore, uh, Wright, Lone Tree, Brunswick, these are locations that are certainly very close to the path of this rotation, the center of the rotation. Uh, not just the actual warning itself, but it seems likely that if a tornado is in fact on the ground, which it seems very likely one is, it will pass through or very close to places like Gilmore. In Gilmore, it may be overhead now, uh, right? You have about, let's see, you have about five minutes before this is right overhead. Lone Tree, just about three minutes more than that. In Brunswick, just about two minutes uh, more than that. And we can see this tight couplet, that green and that red close together. I cannot stress how serious the situation is either. It is very likely we have a large and damaging tornado on the ground continuing to move east northeast. This is not the time to step outside and see if you can see it. First of all, it's nighttime. And second of all, not a smart move. Don't do that, okay? Head inside, head down to the lowest floor of your house, away from exterior walls and windows. We, we talk about lowest floor of your house a lot, uh, but really you just need to be away from exterior walls and windows and certainly not on the highest floor of a building either. If you only have one floor house and you have a bathroom that uh, the walls don't face the outside or, or don't touch the outside, outside your building, go there. That's going to be the best place to be. Head somewhere, if you have a closet in the interior part of your house, that's a good place too if you don't have a basement. Uh, we can see very clearly our rotation here. The National Weather Service just cut this box out a little bit. Some of those locations to the south, they're saying, okay, it's not headed that way. We just got a radar scan update. We're going to take a close look at that and get you up to date here with the latest. But uh, Linton, Paxton, Sullivan, now you are all in the clear. This storm is moving very quickly, and I'm gonna put a tracker on here too, a little farther out ahead of the storm, because there is a lot going on here. I do expect this to be extended. It has not yet, but I do expect this storm to be extended by the National Weather Service, so let me get a tracker on here for you now, especially because if it does get extended, it may be heading closer to more populated areas, and look at that, there it is. Our tornado warning has, in fact, been uh, extended there. So hopefully I was able to give you a little bit extra lead time. Uh, I called out uh, spots as much as I could ahead of this warning. Um, and so here we go. I'm gonna draw a tracker for you. We're gonna talk about who is next in line here from this storm. We, we know some of those locations that are in the immediate track of this. Let's drag this out another 30 minutes though. Right, you know you're in the path. I, you have to be in your safe place right now. Worthington, 10.50ish, uh, it'll be overhead. Pottersville, a little before 11. Spencer and Ramona, also around 11 p.m. That storm will be passing right by you. Let me see if I can call out some more locations here too. Uh, Jasonville, that storm is very, very close to you. Freedom, Ellettsville, uh, you also need to be heading to your safe place without a doubt and the good news is that these are some less populated areas right now but uh, sometimes what we see within these storms is a uh, movement to the right of the motion so in that case we, we would maybe see a movement to the south so certainly places like Bloomington down the line here, Clear Creek, I don't want to rule you out at all. Let's get some details on this new warning. I think we know what it's going to be for. We've been tracking this confirmed tornado for quite a while now. 
and it's likely just a reiteration of everything we've just talked about, but let's find out just to make sure. It appears the storm is speeding up a little bit, uh, 70 miles per hour. Now, I will say the National Weather Service warning is not as uh, dire as it was before. They are still warning this though for a radar confirmed damaging tornado. So we know a tornado is on the ground right now. You need to take this as serious as, as you can. Head down to that safe spot before it's over your heads and I'm, I'm going to keep you up to date as fast as I can with uh, with our updates on radar here but I can only tell you so much uh, go down to your safe place you have to actually do that though and please don't think twice about it okay Arnie Worthington Brunswick you're all within the path here Patrick'sburg you're on the northern end but you are also in the warning and this circulation is right over right so you can see we're a little bit farther from our radar site now. We've switched to using the Indianapolis radar. So it's giving us a view a little bit higher in the storm. But regardless, you can see we have these reds and uh, bluish greens here. That's our mesocyclone. That's our rotation. If there is a tornado, it would be immediately to the south and west of right right now or moving through the town. It'll continue to move in the direction of Brunswick. We're hoping it passes to the south right now where there may not be as much for it to hit. And as it continues to move to the east northeast, we're going to be talking about locations like Arnie for sure uh, in the path of this. It's going to cross 157 here as well. Uh, this storm is moving at 70 miles per hour. So there isn't a ton of time, I'll be honest, uh, to get out of the way of this, which is why I'm warning you right now. You have to be heeding these warnings. If I'm calling your town out and saying, head down to your safe place, I really don't want you to wait. You know, these, these storms. They're moving quick. They don't give us as meteorologists a lot of time to react. They don't give you guys a lot of time to react. So I'm going to call this out as fast as I can. But once again, you need to be the one who's taking it seriously. And if you have friends or family who are in the path of this, I'll call out some more towns here. Brunswick, Johnstown, Worthington, Arnie, uh, Calvers, uh, Calvertsville. That, that looks like it's a little bit to the south of this. But if you are in the path of this, you, and, and say you're not, but you're watching, you're watching our coverage here, and you know someone who lives in one of these towns, make sure you're telling them, hey, you, you got to be aware something's headed your way because that could save a life tonight. It's very important that we get this message out to as many people as we can because this is one of those nights that can't be taken lightly, especially storms like this where we do have a confirmed tornado ongoing and where we have seen uh, visible signs of debris being lifted into a storm. Let's switch to our debris tracker while we're talking about this and get an update on that. And again, that gives us a good idea also of what's going on. Uh, let me see if I can switch to our other radar too and we'll get uh, perhaps a little bit of a clearer picture here. Uh, at what exactly is happening. And the good news right now is that I'm not seeing as clear a signature that what we're, uh, that what we're dealing with is a uh, tornado on the ground producing uh, debris. Now that said, this warning is still suggesting that we do have a tornado that is very possibly on the ground. Even though I'm not seeing debris, uh, being picked up by radar anymore. There is certainly a very, very strong rotation and we need to be treating this as if there is a tornado uh, currently on the ground. Even though we're not seeing the debris, it, it needs to be taken uh, just as seriously. Again, the, uh, the, the storm right now would be passing right around Jasonville, if you know where that is, uh, continuing to progress to the east-northeast. It would be south of Bogle Corner, north of Midland. It is likely to pass in the very close vicinity of Lone Tree and Brunswick. Uh, certainly something we're watching closely are these areas a little bit down the line here too. Daggett, Johnstown, you are both very, uh, very much within the path of this and you need to be taking this very, very seriously as well. Uh, Worthington, you are likely on the south end of this. Meanwhile, Arnie, uh, Worthington though, you, you do need to be heading to your safe spot. Don't get me wrong. Arnie, you need to be heading down to your safe spot too. It is likely within about 10 minutes outside of your town. Uh, Brunswick is in the uh, most immediate vicinity. And once again, I am looking at a higher resolution radar uh, off the screen for you too while we track this on the screen just so I can, I can have the latest and, and uh, most detailed information for you. And the good news is that right now it does appear that things are just beginning to uh, weaken slightly. And right as I say that, you can see they just updated that tornado warning. It's still in effect, but they changed that pink box to red box. So the National Weather Service, uh, as, as we were just talking about, is now saying, okay, 
There's not enough evidence that this tornado is on the ground right now. We're switching this back to a radar indicated tornado warning. All right, so that that's not to say that there is a tornado on the ground. It's not confirmed. The radar is just indicating that there is a, a possibility a tornado could be produced. And we know that too. I mean, this storm has been tornado warned for over an hour now, extending all the way out through Illinois and something we've been watching very closely. Now, what I'm, what I'm saying here is that we do have a very serious storm, and if you're within this red box, you still need to be heading down to your safe place. What I'm not saying is, okay, we can't say it's confirmed, leave that safe place. Absolutely not. You have to be there. And we talked about a good uh, 40 minutes ago now. These are the kinds of storms that will spin up and then may let off the gas a little bit and then spin right back up again. They're moving very fast as well. So if you're in this red polygon, even if the storm isn't producing a confirmed tornado anymore, you do need to be treating this as if it is as always because these things Again, they can spin up very quickly. It does not take a lot for Mother Nature to turn in a very quick direction. We live in Indiana. We know that, and especially on a night when there's this much wind energy and storms are moving this fast across uh, the Hoosier State, of course. Uh, 70 miles per hour is, is the speed at which this tornado is uh, moving right now. It also appears they may have extended this warning a little bit. Uh, and you know what, right as, I'm, right as I'm watching this, I'm seeing now that they have tornado warned another storm. Uh, we're gonna look at that really quick since we've been putting a lot of attention into this one. I wanna get a look at what we're seeing now a little bit to the north here. Uh, and this tornado warning, it appears, was just very recently issued. Uh, so we now have two active tornado warnings and we're going to be keeping an eye and getting you up to date on this one to the north. You can see some locations in there including Frankfurt, Kirkland, Michigan Town, Kempton all included in this warning. And let me get some information for you. Let's find out how fast it's moving, who is going to be directly impacted by this. It's certainly, a, once I, I said it again, I'll say it, I'll say it now too, it, it's a situation tonight where any of these storms can produce a tornado and often will go off and on between producing something and, and taking a break and then getting back into it. So Clinton, Hamilton, Howard, and Tipton counties, you are included in this warning. Uh, I will say Hamilton, it's, it's really, and Tipton too, it's kind of the edges of your counties, the north end of Hamilton County and the south end of Tipton County. Uh, but Clinton and Hamilton counties is very, very much, uh, sorry, excuse me, Clinton and Howard County, this is very much in your backyard right now. So let's get a look at velocity. There we go. Uh, this this warning now has been changed to a, uh, a confirmed tornado warning. So a very busy night. Uh, we have a radar confirmed tornado and quarter sized hail. Uh, this is moving at 60 miles per hour to the northeast. Tonight is a night, everyone, even if there's no warning where you are right now, tonight is a night you cannot take lightly. Okay, we're going to be covering these storms as they go across the state. If the storms aren't producing severe weather right where you are, you need to be prepared right now. You need to have a plan. What am I going to do when that tornado warning's over my head, okay? Because these storms are very dangerous. We've already seen some large tornadoes today. We're seeing evidence of strong tornadoes potentially in Indiana right now too. And I can tell you, just looking at this, this is not a great look on radar. What we're seeing is a very tight rotation, very tight of that, just south of Colfax. You have those bright red and bright green colors side by side. If there is a tornado, it would be right here, right, right here where I'm pointing, immediately south of Colfax. And this storm is moving to the northeast very quickly. Let's put a tracker on that. I'm gonna let you know who needs to be right now out of the way of this. And first of all, if you just got an alert on your phone or something that says you're in a tornado warning, you know what that means. You head down to your safe place. No second thoughts about it right now. This is a confirmed tornado, okay? Let's get that tracker now on here. This storm moving to the northeast very quickly. We're gonna plan it out for the next 30 minutes. This is everyone within the warning, okay? This warning extends out 30 minutes, uh, so to speak. So, uh, Blue Ridge Elementary, Kirkland, Kempton, Goldsmith, these are locations that are in the path of this storm. I'm gonna name out some more locations I'm seeing on my higher resolution radar right in front of me. I'm seeing locations, uh, Frankfurt, you need to be in your safe place right now. Uh, farther down the line of that, Michigan Town, looks like it may pass just to the south of you. And this storm is going to cross 65 as well, and that's gonna be here in just a moment. So if you're near 65 and to the southwest of Frankfurt there, uh, that, that is exactly where this storm is, is going to pass next. Uh, we're going to zoom in more. Uh, Thorn, Thorntown, you're actually just to the south of this, but you're certainly not in the clear. Reagan, 
your positioning has you in a, in a very, uh, you know, that's an area the storm is going to pass next. Please take this very seriously if you're there. Uh, you can see that uh, rotation. We're going to get an update on our radar here in just a second. That is just south of Colfax. Once again, this tornado is, uh, has been confirmed by radar. We know there's something on the ground right now. We're going to switch to our debris tracker. And again, we, we don't like to see this. We, we talked about it just a moment ago, but we have another spot on our radar. Our debris tracker is picking up. Uh, where there is something other than rain, other than hail within a storm cloud. It's this uh, brighter white and blue dot here just along West Manson Colfax Road and it's going to pass, it appears, immediately south of Manson. This storm, Manson, have to be in your safe place. It's likely to pass West County Road 300 south here and eventually just south of Frankfurt along Highway 39. So this, this is exactly what we're concerned about seeing this spot here on our radar. That's a sign that there is debris being picked up by the storm and this is why this storm has a confirmed tornado. Not, it's not a storm we think might produce one. It's one that we're saying there is more than enough evidence to say there is something on the ground right now. So that's why it's so important for you to get to safety right now. And there's no, there's no chance in this, okay? When there's something on the ground, you know, you have to be heading down and being proactive uh, to that safe place uh, because you don't want to push something like this. I mean, this is an immediate danger. Uh, once again, and I've been saying it all evening, if you're not in this, in this polygon, that, this tornado warning, and you're thinking, all right, how does this impact me? All right, well, now's the time to start thinking about who you might know, okay? If you know someone in Frankfurt, Reagan, Kirkland, Michigan Town, these areas we've been talking about for the past several minutes, give them a call right now, you know? You, you don't want someone to fall asleep and, and maybe miss out on one of these warnings. The best thing that we can do is tell as many people what's going on and, you know, if you know someone who lives there, give them a call. If they're asleep, you might wake them up. You might save someone's life, okay? It's the best thing you can do right now if you're not within the warning. Uh, if you are within the warning, of course, the best thing to do is to head down to your safe place. That's the lowest floor of your house, an interior room, a basement. Uh, no two ways about it. You need to head down there right now, okay? This storm is passing between Reagan and Frankfurt. Looks like we just got an update to the warning. I'm going to find out what the National Weather Service is updating. Um, still moving 65 miles per hour to the uh, northeast. It is located near Frankfurt. We're seeing that it is uh, really a little bit closer to Manson right now and this is continuing to slide to the northeast at 65 miles per hour. Boylston, I just saw you on the map. We're going to take a closer look a little bit downstream, okay? These are locations that would be next in the line of this and I expected to pass. Uh, it appears just south of Frankfurt, just north of Cyclone and uh, in the direction of Boylston. And Boylston, at the current uh, trajectory of this storm, Boylston, you're not in a great spot right now. So uh, hunker down, head to that safe place. You're about 10 minutes out from this. Michigan town, uh, you may be just a little bit to the north of this. We're going to hope that's the case, but there's, there's no room to, to, to stay out. You need to play this safe and head down to the lowest floor of your house. Uh, Hillisburg as well, that's also a town that is in the path of this, more like 15 minutes out here. Uh, I'm going to zoom out again really quick because we do have two active tornado warnings. We don't have any updates on this storm. We're going to get back to it, okay, but that's the uh, most information I can give you for this exact minute. Um, so let's head back south again to our previous tornado warning we were covering. I'm going to switch back to our reflectivity too, by the way. That's what you may be more used to seeing, those reds and oranges. And, uh, and we're going to take a look at what we're seeing again to the south right now. So let's slide down there and we're seeing again our tornado warn storm. Uh, this now is moving in the direction of Spencer um, and it is right there. We're going to take our, our lightning off here so we can see a little bit better right there north of Arnie, heading in the direction of Spencer. Uh, it looks like it has just passed through Daggett. Uh, we've been talking about the storm for a while here. Uh, we still have that, uh, let me make sure that's not a new warning in effect there um, between Sullivan and Wright uh, because we did just have a warning out there. So let me get some information on that. Uh, if you're in Spencer or around Spencer though, you do have a, uh, a strong storm headed your direction and that is a new uh, warning, it appears, based on what I'm seeing right here um, in the direction of Sullivan and Wright. Um, I'm going to wait to get a little more information on that, though, and we're going to get back to that one. Uh, what we're seeing, though, again, we're going to jump to this storm around Spencer, 
And you can see on our reflectivity, we have those reds, those oranges, but more importantly, we're going to take a look at our velocity and we're going to see what we see within the storm. This is our wind. And I have to say the good news is I'm not seeing anything very clear that there is a tornado ongoing here. But what I will say is, uh, is of course, there is likely enough rotation in here that, you know, and we've seen the storm produce tornadoes in the past. There's enough to say that there is a chance that we could see a tornado uh, get spun up. So uh, around Spencer, Spencer Arnie, um, that's where you need to be in your safe place. Daggett, you appear to be in the clear for now. Uh, we're going to get more information on this, uh, on this storm. We're, we're now seeing um, just around Sullivan again. And I'm trying to figure out if we just got a new warning here or if this is the old one that hasn't been let go yet. So let me get some information on that. Uh, for us all in general in Indiana tonight, these are storms that could impact all of us. And that's why it's important that we, uh, we all take this seriously. If you know someone in an area that's being impacted, it's very important that you give them a call. Make sure they know what's going on. Make sure they're safe. And of course, this is one of those situations that's really serious in that every one of us has the potential to see some kind of severe weather. It's the kind of night where the atmosphere is just very conductive to all kinds of severe weather. And it does appear that this pink box is the one that has expired, by the way. So uh, we're going to jump back to our storm a little bit farther to the north here um, because there is a confirmed tornado on this storm right now. And we're going to take a close look. We're going to go to a, a very quick break, but I'm going to give you as much information as I can on the storm before I let you go for a second. Uh, confirmed tornado on the ground here. It is just south of Frankfurt. We're going to put a tracker on this too. We're going to make sure you have all the information you can uh, before we give you a, a quick break in coverage. So let me put that tracker on here. If there is a tornado, I'm, I'm looking right here, okay? Right here to the southwest of Frankfurt, all right? That's where we're going to set our tracker up. We're going to drag it out to the northeast. The storm is moving very quickly uh, to the northeast. Uh, so for the next 20 minutes, all right, that's where we're going to plan it out for. Uh, Reese, Michigan Town, Forest, Rucheville, and Goldsmith, those are all locations that are in the path of this storm immediately. You absolutely have to be in a safe place. Uh, some other locations within this path. Blue Ridge Elementary, this storm may be right on top of you. Avery, Boylston, Hillisburg. Uh, we're also looking at locations uh, around East County Road 100, north and east, right where they cross there. And Groomsville as well, about 20 minutes out from this storm. Those are all locations that are within the path of this and need to be prepared to head to their safe place immediately. Uh, Circleville there as well, Kempton, Normanda, those are all locations that are on the southern end of this, but nonetheless, you're in the warning. Too close for comfort, of course, uh, you have to go down to your safe place right now. And I'll mention that even if you're not dealing with the tornado warning in that area right now, one of the biggest concerns we have is 70 mile per hour wind gusts and quarter sized hail. Those wind gusts are substantial enough. They can do just as much damage as a weak tornado. We're going to go to a quick break. We will be here providing you the latest uh, in just a few minutes.
Live from CBS 4, this is your News Now. Tonight on CBS 4 News at 11, we are continuing our coverage of the severe weather outbreak that is hitting central Indiana at this hour. This is a very dangerous situation for parts of the state with tornado warnings already in effect right now. Thanks for joining us at 11. I'm Bob Donaldson. I'm Debbie Knox, and we are under the threat for long track tornadoes tonight. So let's get right back over to meteorologist Tucker Antico. And Tucker, what's the latest? Well, you know, we are, we're coming right back to coverage that we were just on for about the past hour. We're jumping right back into some of the same storms we've been watching because this is one of those nights where we do have the potential for long lived storms. We may have some long lived tornadoes out there. Uh, we're going to keep our walk cam up. You'll see me walking back and forth. I'm looking at our radar on the desk here and I'll walk back over here and point things out as things stand out to me so you know what's going on. But we do have a confirmed tornado in this storm that is uh, right now moving through locations near Frankfurt and uh, in, in those locations we've been covering about the past uh, 20 minutes exactly where that storm is moving through. We did just get an extension on this tornado warning to the south. This is now including uh, major locations like Martinsville. We're going to take a closer look at both of those, but even if you're not in a tornado warning, you can see a lot of these yellow boxes. Those are severe storm warnings and those are moving into the metro area now too. So again, let me take a look at my radar. We're going to keep that camera on the wall there. I'll walk back on there and I'll talk you through what I'm seeing on radar. So first things first, we're going to get a look at that storm with the confirmed tornado. We're going to give you an update on what we're seeing here. Again, this was just located to the south of Frankfurt not long ago. It seems we have two separate tornado warnings on this now, so that would suggest that we may be looking at two separate areas of rotation. And you know, you can kind of see them here on our a reflectivity, but if I pull up our velocity images, uh, actually, you know, it's a little tougher to see there. So I'm going to point out what I'm looking at on a reflectivity. Then you can see this, this hook here just a little bit. It's subtle, but what I'm looking at here is a rotation that may be here around Michigan town moving up towards uh, Rusheville there. Now that's the first rotation, but the areas that are under this confirmed tornado warning, meaning that we have seen uh, radar at least has given us enough indication there's a tornado on the ground. This storm is just south of Frankfurt moving just south of Michigan town. It's likely to move just north of Kempton. If you're in either of those places, though, you need to head to your safe spot right now. Let's open up our velocity again. A little tougher to see on the velocity, and that's not a bad thing. That means uh, we may be seeing a little bit more of a diffuse rotation, as we call it. It's not as uh, a tight and, and for sure. It's not a slam dunk. Um, that could be a sign the storm is weakening, at least the rotation is, but we're going to treat it as if it isn't. Of course, we're going to take full caution here, and there's a lot of reason to do so with some of the tornadoes that we have seen across the area today. So uh, we have two separate tornado warnings here. You have that pink and red box and many locations within there. Uh, so what exactly are we seeing? Again, our first area of rotation is right around Michigan town, just to the north. It's going to pass north of Michigan town, around Forest, around Rusheville. Eventually, it may reach Kokomo. So if you're in Kokomo, that may reach you in about the next 20 minutes. Of course, that's a, a major population center. You absolutely have to be prepared if you're around Kokomo, especially if you're to the southwest of it. And we have this second area, which we're seeing a little more clearly uh, right here, uh, just south of Michigan town near Boylston. That's going to head towards Circleville, Groomsville, and Kempton. Those are all locations that must be taking shelter right now. So those are two of our current warnings. Now it's a busy night. We have more than just two warnings in effect, and we're going to take a look at some of those other locations uh, that are seeing uh, tornado warnings right now. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit for us, and we're going to take a look to the south where we have seen a uh, update to a previously tornado warned storm. And we've been talking about this storm since it was in Illinois. So this storm has a very long history of producing uh, tornadoes or at least violent rotation enough that the National Weather Service is uh, very wisely going ahead and warning this very proactively. And we can see very clearly right now, again, not, not the situation that we like to see, but we can see very clearly right now an area that is uh, under a uh, mesocyclone. That's the rotation within the cloud. You can see those red and green colors side by side here. This is immediately to the east of Spencer, moving in the direction of Steinsville, uh, Ghostport. It's likely to pass to the south of Paragon and uh, Modesto, though those are locations that are both within the warning here too. 
So make sure you're in your safe place. It's going to cross, uh, it appears, 67 or at least will pass uh, very close to 67 to the south. You can see Martinsville on the very edge of this warning out here. You're still a good 25 minutes out if you're in Martinsville. And you know what? You just saw that pink box go up. You know what that means? We were just saying it. We see that very tight rotation here. The National Weather Service has gone ahead and said, we've seen enough on radar. We're calling this a confirmed tornado. There is absolutely something going on within this storm. So a little extra urgency uh, if you are just hearing this warning. You need to head to your safe place. Don't waste any time. These storms are moving very fast. Uh, you can see that very tight rotation. And actually, you see those pixels right there, those green and pink pixels, those brighter ones in the middle right there. That's exactly where a tornado would be right now and very likely where a tornado currently is right now. Let me measure out some distances so you can get a better idea of exactly what we're talking about here and exactly what locations we're most concerned about. And it looks like we just got an update on our radar. Uh, the latest update places this rotation a little closer to Steinsville. And I also want to take a look at our, uh, our, our correlation coefficient. That's our debris tracker and find out if there is any debris in this storm. And I'm going to put this in motion or rather I'm going to look at my higher resolution radar uh, in front of me on my iPad. I'm tracking this in two spots for you so you for sure have the latest. And this is a high, uh, high resolution radar I'm using. It'd be tough to tell on air what we're looking at but I can tell you for sure as a meteorologist and someone who's seen a lot of uh, a lot of tornadoes on radar, uh, I can say for sure what we're looking at right now is a good looking storm in terms of strength and you can see this uh, little bullseye here just to the north and east. It's, it's really almost on top of you in Steinsville. That's very likely where our tornado is right now and it's likely to pass very, very close to, if not through Steinsville, as this thing continues to move to the northeast. Uh, we're going to get more locations on the map here and a very close eye of uh, uh, what exactly is in the path. I have meteorologist Alyssa Andrews with me too. Well, what you're talking about that spot in northern Monroe County, that's exactly where the National Weather Service has indicated that it's very likely that there is a tornado there with debris being lofted into the into the air. And farther north on some of those storms you've been following, this is for Huntington County. Um, so it's just north of Grant County, northeast of Howard County, and, and there were, were reports of, of trees um, on the ground that have been uprooted. So we are now finally starting to see a few storm reports out of these tornadoes. And this is the storm that we've been watching since Illinois, too. You know, this has been a long-lived storm, and uh, certainly the National Weather Service is, is not playing around with this, uh, so to speak. They know that if they see something that that may develop into a, a more uh, a clear signature, radar signature, they're going to warn this, and very rightly so, because we're not playing any games here, we're not taking any risks. It's a very dangerous night, and we've seen throughout the day, not just in Indiana, but across a lot of the U.S., we've seen uh, what these tornadoes have been doing. Now, it's very difficult to see, uh, just with some interference here on our uh, debris tracker, but I will say what I am concerned about right now is this spot right here. Uh, it's not perfectly within all those red colors, but this is very likely to be debris as this storm has just passed through Steinsville and continues to move to the northeast. It's this signature here, that debris signature as we call it, that the National Weather Service will especially look for in saying, okay, we believe there is a confirmed tornado right now, and that's, uh, that's what we're looking at specifically uh, at this moment. So um, this storm, very serious right now. I'm going to switch back to our reflectivity because we actually have a very good view of that hook, and we have not had a lot of great views of hooks today just with you know, how uh, messy and how linear these storms have been, and you don't always get that classic signature in that case. So uh, what we can see here, and I'll zoom in a little closer so we can get some more locations on our map here, is that hook near Steinsville and that is co-correlated or uh, uh, rather it is it is uh, yeah co-correlated right right next to some of these uh, higher uh, velocity readings a little messier right now uh, you can see there is some brighter green we have some blue it's a little messier it's not as clear the rotation that that uh, red and green color that we see in a classic signature but there is certainly some debris and there is certainly at least a uh, strong amount of rotation broadly in the atmosphere and we can say especially from that debris and that hook that there is a very likely tornado ongoing. I see Baker in the path of this. Uh, that is just a few minutes out from you, Baker. We're going to look a little bit farther to the north and east. Uh, I'm seeing Liberty Church Road, Maxwell, uh, Browns Crossing, Rogers Road also. Uh, this is where 
69 approaches Martinsville. That's just a little bit down the line here too. This storm, again, very dangerous. I'm going to switch back to our reflectivity because unlike a lot of times tonight, that's actually giving us the clearest view of what appears to be going on in this storm. I'm referencing my high resolution radar. I'm looking at on my iPad right now. So even uh, if you don't see me on screen, I'm, I'm trying to get an, an especially exclusive look for you here on CBS4 as we track these storms. And once again, it's a messy looking storm, but it is very likely that we are seeing a tornado uh, currently ongoing here and moving in the direction of Martinsville, in fact, likely only about 15 minutes away from the town. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to put a tracker on this, and we know this storm is moving fast. We've seen a lot of fast moving storms tonight. Uh, this is a radar confirmed tornado. The National Weather Service is calling it a damaging tornado, and this storm is currently moving at around 65 miles per hour. So it is a quick mover. You will not have a lot of time to take shelter if you're if you're pushing it. You know, I'm giving you as much warning as I can and I really hope that you're taking that seriously because tonight's not a night where you want to play with Mother Nature. Uh, so let's put the tracker on this. Let's find out exactly uh, the, the path this storm is going to take and we'll put it out for 15 minutes here. Baker, Maxwell, Martinsville, Woodcrest and Morgantown you're all locations in the path of this immediate rotation. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow our tracker here to um, to put more towns on the map for us, so we can get a, a more precise look at who's in the path. So let me let me draw that out again, and we're gonna get another tracker on this here. Um, so again, from where it is right now, many locations are not far out from this storm. Uh, again, Baker, Maxwell, Martinsville, Woodcrest. You're all in uh, in the immediate vicinity of this storm, and it's certainly a very important storm to take seriously because we do know that there is a tornado that has been confirmed by the National Weather Service right now. Uh, we're going to set it over the anchors here uh, really quickly. I'm going to get an update on some other storms in the area and we'll get back to this. Thank you very much, Tucker. In fact, the Indianapolis DPW is standing by. We can tell you that to respond to any kind of storm damage. We are getting some reports in some of the counties about sirens going off. Uh, a lot of people are hearing this. If you're not watching TV, you've got to be hearing it by these tornado sirens that are being activated at this hour. Yeah, we are talking to various EMA directors across the uh, counties that are impacted right now. We should tell you that our drive cam is heading towards the northwest towards the Crawfordsville area. But again, that's only one area that is being impacted by this severe weather. We do have that track of storms towards the northwest. We also have another track of storms that is moving in the Steinsville area around Monroe County. We have heard from EMA directors at uh, White County. Mm -hmm. They say very strong winds are reported. This is around Monticello, uh, very significant rainfall. Also just south of White County there in Montgomery County, around the Crawfordsville area, so to speak. Uh, they have opened their Emergency Operation Action Center. They have sounded their tornado sirens. Mm -hmm. uh, they have actually sent out volunteers to assess some of the damage. So again, because we're dealing with a situation that's hitting at night, it is more difficult is. to assess some of the damage right now. We don't have any reports of, uh, of any injuries uh, as far as we could tell. Again, this is a developing situation that you're watching in real time as we're looking at live Guardian radar. But again, as we keep you updated on this weather situation, we are also going to be keeping you updated on the effects of it, some of the damage that has already been done. As we've heard from uh, Tucker Antico, we have seen reports on radar of tornadoes and of debris mm -hmm. being kicked up by those tornadoes. So again, mm -hmm. this is a developing situation. Stay with CBS4 throughout this night. We'll keep you updated. We'll keep you safe mm -hmm. with all the information that you need to know. Yeah. So let's go back to you, Tucker, and get the very latest now. Yeah, you know, and, and I want to mention before we jump to an updated warning in the Kokomo area, and we gave you a heads up on that just a few moments ago, but uh, we have this line of storms. It is uh, really extending through uh, Kokomo all the way down to Greencastle, and you can see this line of storms right here beginning to approach some of our areas uh, in western, uh, in the western uh, metro area. This is near uh, Hendricks County right now, and you can see that we have uh, what is, again, that very well put together line, and these severe storm warnings, which now go to the border of Marion County, they're in effect for 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So even if you're not under one of these tornado warnings, we are talking about wind speeds that will approach 70 miles per hour.
per hour may even exceed that too. And when you have wind that strong, you're going to do damage regardless of there being rotation or not. So if you're getting alerts on your phone or you're just hearing it from us, or you're hearing thunder nearby, basically every storm we're seeing in this line, in fact, every storm we are seeing in this line from northern to southern Indiana is warned for severe weather, each of them warned for damaging wind gusts. So take these storms very seriously, even if it's not a tornado, a 70 mile per hour wind gust will do just as much damage as a weak end tornado would. So a very serious night for all of us and something we're watching very closely in addition to those tornado warnings. But I'm going to take you to the tornado warnings. That's where we are seeing the most imminent threat. We're going to get back to that storm near Martinsville in a second, but I want to give an update on this storm uh, near Tipton County. We haven't talked about for a few minutes, so let's get the latest on this. Again, this is uh, Kokomo, which is right in the middle of it. It's Clinton, Howard, and especially Tipton County uh, that are in the line for this storm as it passes through. We're going to take a closer look at Kokomo here and areas surrounding, and of course, we're going to look at our velocity get an idea of exactly where the rotation is within this storm. So let me pull that up for you now and I'm going to open up again our velocity, our wind speeds first. And what we're seeing here, and you know, it, 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 we've seen this a lot tonight and all I can say is please take these warnings seriously because what we're looking at is another couplet. Again, those red and green colors side by side here. That is the telltale sign of a tornado or at least a storm very capable of producing a tornado on radar. I wouldn't be surprised either if the National Weather Service does end up going ahead and uh, and making this another confirmed tornado warning. We'll have to wait and see if, if this thing does pick up some debris, but that's a very tight couplet, a very good sign that if there's a tornado, it's right here to the west of Kokomo High School and moving in the direction or perhaps just south of Kokomo High School, perhaps just uh, south of the Chrysler plant perhaps just south of downtown Kokomo too, but very, very close. If you're in any of those locations, you need to take shelter right now before any second thoughts. Uh, Taylor, also, you're in the path of this storm. Howard and Greentown, also a little bit farther down the line here, but you are all in the path of this storm. If you're not in any of those towns and you know somebody, give them a call. Make sure they're aware of what's going on. These are some more populated areas. There's a better chance that you guys may know someone who's there. Make sure they're aware of what's going on. I hate nocturnal tornadoes. I hate nocturnal severe weather because people go to sleep and you don't have a way to get a warning. And that's where I need people like you who are watching to help us out here. Help us get the message out and watch out for your neighbors. OK, that, that's an extremely important thing to do here with these kinds of nights. So this storm is in effect. Uh, this warning rather is in effect for areas in the vicinity of Kokomo. That includes Kokomo itself. Taylor, Howard, Greentown, areas nearby as well. Uh, Rusheville, this storm just passed through your area. Rusheville, you know, I'm going to say give it about five more minutes and you'll be in the clear. Excuse me, but these storms continuing to move to the northeast uh, again uh, very, very quickly to around 65 miles per hour. And we'll zoom in a little closer here. Uh, doesn't look like we have a lot of population between Kokomo, Howard, Greentown, and Taylor. But if you're around any of those locations or within the middle, you, you do need to be heading down to that safe place right now because this storm is bearing down on your location. Uh, we got an extension on that tornado warning to the south of us. It looks like it does cover parts of the metro area. I'm seeing Franklin and perhaps Greenwood now included in this tornado warning as well. This is a very serious storm. We've been tracking for a little while here. Uh, Greenwood, rather, you are just on the northern periphery of this. The southern part of the town may be included in this warning. It's a uh, very close there. Um, it looks as though if you're more in the Whiteland area, you would be included in this and the more downtown parts of Greenwood, you're just on the north, but you should be watching the storm very seriously regardless. Franklin though, you're right in the midst of this. Uh, Morgantown as well, you are very, very close to um, this tornado warned storm. Actually, you're within the warning, but the core of the storm we're, we're hoping is going to pass just to your north. And what we're seeing here isn't as clear rotation as what we were seeing earlier. I will say though, this storm, we've seen a lot of evidence that it may be cycling. And when we say cycling in meteorology, what we're saying is the storm, it, it's getting its act together. It's starting to rotate very quickly. Then it takes a break for a few minutes, okay? And then it comes back and there's enough energy in the atmosphere that these storms can keep coming back and cycling on and on. And that's why throughout the evening, we've seen this storm confirmed uh, to have tornadoes and then, and then it looks as though it may be stopping. And, and I 
cannot rule out at all, that's why we have the tornado warning in effect, that it will not produce another confirmed tornado going forwards. Uh, it certainly very much so has the potential to do that. This storm looks like it has just passed through the southern end of Martinsville. Last time we talked about this, it was uh, just immediately approaching Martinsville. Uh, again, we're looking at this area of rotation here. You have that bright blue and you have some of those uh, dimmer reds side by side. That is a tight couplet there and certainly that's exactly where a tornado would be. Let's put a tracker on this since this warning was just extended. I want to give you as much advanced warning as possible um, here to help you out as best I can and that's one of the best ways to do it. So let's put a tracker on here uh, this warning and the National Weather Service is doing a great job tonight too. They're helping us out a lot because the thing that they're doing is they're warning very, very far in advance of these storms arriving in your backyards. So what that's allowing for is it's giving us more lead time, more time to prepare, more time for us meteorologists to say, hey, you know, let's take a look at what they're seeing. OK, here's the rotation. And and thank goodness they gave us a warning uh, 30 minutes before it approaches your town, because that's 30 more minutes for you to head down to that lowest floor of your house or an interior room or basement at best if you have one. So here's our tracker. Uh, we have several locations on here that you can see this tornado is in the path of, or at least tornado worn storm. And uh, Hensley is, is in the most immediate vicinity within about five to 10 minutes out. Trafalgar, uh, about 10 minutes out. Franklin, that is one of our, our larger population areas. Uh, that is, again, about 15 minutes out from this storm being right on top of your location. And I was saying this before, but this is not the time to say, OK, I have 15 minutes to head to that safe spot. Let me see what I can see outside. Not like that at all. Head down to that safe spot right now. If you're within that red polygon, that extends all the way to Shelbyville, OK? So if you live between Martinsville and Shelbyville, you have to head down to that safe spot right now. I'll call out some other towns, too, I'm looking at here. That includes Bargersville, New Whiteland, Nineveh, Trafalgar, Franklin, uh, Needham, Fairland, Marion, London, just to the south of Sugar Creek there too. Uh, these are all locations that are within the path of this storm that are all included in this tornado warning and that you have to take the most serious precautions to keep yourself safe here, especially with a storm that has been known to be producing tornadoes for the past several hours since it was in Illinois, believe it or not. This has had a long history of producing uh, tornadoes and severe weather. So please take this seriously. And once again, we're talking about more populated areas. If you're not within this warning and you know someone who is, give them a call. You know, be a good neighbor. Make sure that Whoever you know in that location is awake and aware. You know, I was saying it before, but I, I hate those situations where we, uh, we, we have people who maybe went to sleep or don't have a way of getting warnings. That's where your job as a viewer who isn't within this warning, who's maybe watching from afar, that's something that you can do that is very helpful for us and uh, very helpful for your friends and neighbors. Uh, looks like we just got a report. Uh, meteorologist Alyssa Andrews is here. She's going to share that as we uh, are beginning to get some damage reports coming in. Wow, and this is a, a really unfortunate report that we're just getting in over National Weather Service chatter. So a spotter is reporting that a house at 1253, um, this is over in Sullivan County, that's been completely destroyed. Unfortunately, wow. in the, the tornado worm storm that you were talking about earlier tonight. And also, we have another um, thunderstorm wind damage report, and this source is from an emergency manager. So there was a, a thunderstorm winds that flattened two structures to the basement. You, you can hear me now. The thunderstorm winds flattened two structures to the basement and several other structures with roofs blown off near Junction, off Benton, Tippecanoe, and White Counties. One inch hail also reported there, but what I said earlier. Um, unfortunately, a spotter did report over in Sullivan County on that tornado warm storm that we were looking at earlier that a house was completely destroyed. And that gives you an idea of some of the power we're seeing in these storms. We were on that storm since it was in Illinois. Um, that's a very unfortunate situation and uh, you just hope the best for people who are being impacted by these if it's not you yourself. Uh, and, and again, that's why I'm telling you when, when I call out your town's name, please don't think twice. Tonight's a night that we need to take seriously. Uh, it's the biggest threat we've, we've had here in Indiana for uh, more than a year. And um, it's just, it's, it's very serious. There's no two ways about it. We're talking about the potential for loss of life tonight. And there's, there's no way to sugarcoat that. It's a very serious uh, situation that we have unfolding in several locations where we have tornado warnings. And we're doing our best here to keep you updated, keep you safe. 
Uh, only you can heed our warnings. We'll give you the warning, but you got to do the rest of the job and put yourself in a safe place and watch out for your neighbors too, because that's such a big part of this. You could save someone's life tonight. Uh, so here we are. We're looking at an extension on this tornado warning. This is beginning to move a little bit out of our area, but I wanted to give you an update on this storm uh, that has been uh, outside of Kokomo for a little bit of time here. We do have an area of rotation just to the east of Kokomo now as the storm continues to move to the northeast and I'll put a tracker on this for the next 35 minutes. Again, this is moving a little bit more out of our area, but Greentown, Swayze, Sweetser, Marion, uh, Banquo, Mount Etna and Salmoni. If I pronounce that correctly, you know, you can see your town on the map there. These are locations that are within this updated tornado warning, and it is time for you to go to your safe place right now as well, as we have, again, an updated tornado warning that is extended for this storm. Uh, no confirmed tornado on this, but certainly a serious situation unfolding right now. And then just a little bit farther south, a confirmed debris signature just east of Martinsville. Let's jump to that storm again right now then, because we've been watching that storm and, and we've seen the rotation on there too. So we're gonna head back south as meteorologist Alyssa Andrews is uh, bringing us the latest on that storm to the south. Uh, she's seeing signs of a debris signature. That's uh, what we look for when uh, confirming tornadoes oftentimes, and this storm has had a history of producing tornadoes. So let's jump into this. You're looking at your velocity uh, right now. And if we take a look at our um, we call this our correlation, co correlation coefficient, rather, uh, also known as our debris tracker. Um, and if we take a look at this, I'm going to look at it on my higher resolution uh, radar also, and it's a little bit tough to see this one, again, because we're, we're pretty close to our radar. There's a lot that can interfere with it close to the ground. I'm going to try to pick this one out for you, though. Uh, but what we have here, regardless, is a very serious uh, storm and one that is very capable of producing a tornado. And, you know, it may be difficult to pick it out exactly right now with all the, uh, all the, uh, all the junk in the way of it, uh, so to speak. But I can say, and we'll look at this right now, is that we do have a very clear area of rotation. And you see that right there, just south of Bargersville, just north of Bud, you have some of those red and green and bluish colors, rather, side by side. This is where a tornado would be, just south of Bargersville, just north of Bud, kind of right in between. I do have concern about Franklin next because this storm is headed uh, you know, very, very much in the direction of Franklin, only about five or so minutes out well, from the you town. Know anybody traveling along 135 or 44, make sure they get off the road and into a safe place out of their car. Uh, pull over, get get to a gas station, a restaurant, somewhere to take shelter. You don't want to be in your car in one of these situations. And unfortunately, the history of this storm that is tornado warned. Um, we got another update on that house that was completely destroyed in Sullivan. It looks like a block of houses have been destroyed from that tornado. That's, that's not the situation we want to hear at all. And it's the reason that tonight we've been bringing you such an important message. Uh, Bob, uh, have a report. I'm wondering, no, I'm, I'm going to ask Alyssa, what are some other details about that? Is that in a populated town, Alyssa, that we're hearing from the National Weather Service there in Sullivan County? Yeah, what we're seeing from, from that, it looks like a spotter um, saw near Sullivan. It was a, a new report from Sullivan County from the spotter that indicated an entire block of houses are damaged or destroyed. And, and the, the housing spacing, I mean, it, it is pretty spaced out, but um, once you get into those, those communities near Sullivan, they're in the, into those neighborhoods, it looks like it just hit the, the right place at the right time. And, and um, it looks like 300 South, 400 West Howard County, partial home collapse reported there. And, and Alyssa, okay. very quickly, about what time would that storm have gone through that area? Because for those of you just joining us here at 1130, this has been a, uh, a severe weather outbreak that has been going on now for a few hours. About when did that storm go through there in Sullivan, Alyssa? That was a little more than a half hour ago, I would say. Tucker, would you say with the where, where there was the confirmed tornado on the ground where they upgraded that yes, tornado warning? Yes, that was about 45 minutes ago. We saw it pass right through uh, the town of Sullivan itself. We should mention this is over in the western part of the state, over by Terre Haute, a couple hours from Indianapolis. Is that correct? That is Sullivan correct. Area. Yeah, so you yes. see people get an idea of exactly what we're talking about in the state here. Well, and, and now we're seeing um, circulation near the Johnson County Morgantown line, it and looks like. And we're looking at that right now, okay. too, uh, right between Bargersville and Bud. And I was going to pull up, I'm going to circle this right here. This is where we've seen the greatest rotation very recently. 
Uh, we heard there may have been reports of a debris signature. It's very tough to say when you're close to the radar, but we'll be watching some of the spots right around here where that rotation is uh, most evident. Um, and I'll say it does appear, just looking at our, uh, our reflectivity, that's your, your rain and hail and, and other things being picked up by radar, it does appear very, very possible that we are looking at a tornado that may be somewhere right in here, heading in the direction of Franklin right now. Franklin just a couple minutes out from perhaps an impact from a tornado and beyond Franklin. It's Needham, Hendricks, Shelbyville, Indiana Grand there. Those are all locations that are uh, in the path downstream of this very dangerous storm moving through parts of Johnson County. And we've seen these tornado worn storms produce tornadoes off and on throughout the evening. And it's very likely they will continue to do so with how conductive the atmosphere is for spinning things up. I want to point out one other thing, by the way, this is not a tornado worn storm, but we're talking about Marion County, uh, clearly our uh, one of our most populated areas. We have a severe thunderstorm warning that is in effect. It includes all of Marion County, extends through places like Zionsville, Carmel, Fishers, Greenwood, Greenfield, basically the entire Indianapolis metro area right now is included within a severe thunderstorm warning. And I just highlighted it there for you. This goes until 12 a.m. and let me move that out of the way so it's not completely uh, uh, covering uh, our, our warning box here. but. Uh, what we're looking at here is a warning that is in effect for all of the Indianapolis metro area for 70 mile per hour wind gusts. And you can see this very strong line of storms crossing through that location, producing those wind gusts. Make sure you're taking this wind threat seriously too. Tucker, along those lines, we are getting reports from people saying that there are sirens going off in Hamilton County. We are getting reports of sirens going off in Marion County. And that's what you would expect when there is a thunderstorm warning issued under these conditions, correct? Uh, that is very good to know. It, it is different for each emergency management. Um, we're hearing that they're in the Glendale. The sirens were going off at the Glendale Mall area from uh, one of our executive producers. So it, Marion County is starting to hear these sirens going off. And, and that is very good information to have because I can say, I can say two things here. Uh, definitely important for you to take shelter. Of course, that's what those sirens are first and foremost representing. A second off, unless you're in uh, Shelby County or Johnson County here, you do not have an active tornado warning. If you're in Indianapolis, if you're in Hamilton County, again, unless you're in Shelby or Johnson County right now, there is not an active tornado warning, but rather those sirens, I presume would be going off for these powerful wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour. So very important, I appreciate that information. That, that's really good to know. Uh, we do have this powerful line of storms here moving into the north and western part of Marion County right now. Again, just as uh, damaging potentially as a weak tornado would be. As we get to the bottom of the hour, Tucker, it may be useful to go ahead and talk about where do we stand as far as the watches and warnings? Who's under what kind of Absolutely. a warning at this point? Yeah, and that, that's a good thing to, to look at here, too. We'll, we'll give you a broad update. I'm going to zoom out so you can see everything that we're looking at right now. And I will say our watch, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, still goes until 3 a.m. tonight. That's that's going to take us pretty late into the evening. It uh, looks like we just got an update on that tornado warning, by the way. So we'll get back to that in a second here. But if we take a look statewide, you're seeing those severe storm warnings uh, now have expired around the Bloomington area and to the southwest. But we still have severe storm warnings and tornado warnings that take us from around Johnson County, Shelby County, all the way up towards Fort Wayne. Again, our watch is still in effect until 3 a.m. across central Indiana. I have a feeling these storms will be out of here before then, but especially if you're in the central and northern parts of the state, that's where most of the activity is right now. We do have a tornado warning still in effect to the north and east of Kokomo, one outside Fort Wayne that's out of our area, and severe storm warnings across the entire Indianapolis metro area. Now, I mentioned we just got an update. That storm heading in the direction of Franklin is now confirmed to be producing a tornado. So the National Weather Service has seen more evidence uh, that this storm is dangerous and producing at this present moment. So we're gonna investigate that here. We're gonna find out exactly what they're seeing. We're gonna take you to the latest. And what you're looking at again is rain and perhaps some hail on our uh, live guardian radar. 
If we switch to our velocity, that tells you what the wind is doing. You can see that couplet once again here. This is just to the south and west of Whiteland. You have that bright pink and that bright green side by side. If there is a tornado right now, it's going to be right here, just to the, we'll call it south, southwest of Whiteland. It's going to pass between Whiteland and Franklin. Looks like it may be just south of the town, but it's going to be very close in Whiteland. If you're in Bargersville or Providence, that worst of the storm has now passed through your area. It's not the case though for places like Needham, Clark, uh, Fairlands, also down the line in this storm too. This is heading in your direction, but it is a very tight rotation. Again, we're seeing with this storm and we've seen this storm pulse up between weaker and stronger rotations. There's a very good chance it's cycling as we say. It's, it's uh, basically producing a tornado, dying out, and then getting its act back together. And what we're seeing here is the storm beginning to get its act back together. And this is a very clear signature of a, a very, very possible tornado. And in this case, the National Weather Service has gone ahead and confirmed it, which means there is a very good chance we're going to see perhaps a little bit of a debris signature too. And it, it's tough to see, but I'm certainly seeing at least somewhat of a signature here. Again, in that exact spot, we were talking about the strongest rotation. And you can see that brighter spot just to the south and west of Whiteland. It's small right there, okay? But that is about the first radar frame that we've seen where we are seeing that debris signature. So a very, very serious situation ongoing right now. Uh, this storm is just south of Whiteland, moving in the direction just south of Clark, just north of Needham and moving in the direction eventually of Shelbyville right now. So it is this signature right here that the National Weather Service is seeing and saying, okay, we're going to go ahead and say, yes, there is a tornado ongoing because we are seeing evidence of debris being lofted in the air. And that is perfectly correlated with that area of high velocity, which actually if we switch to the velocity again really quick, you can click on the pallet there. We'll again confirm that right here, uh, there it is, is right where you have your strongest rotation just immediately south of Whiteland. So Whiteland, you have to be in your safe place now. It's, it's to the point where you're out of time. You need to be there at this moment. Needham, Clark, if you're right between those places or in either location, those are locations that are next in line and you have to head to that safe spot right now. We'll throw a tracker on this too and give you an update on who's next in line to see this storm. We'll, uh, we'll give you a little more of an advanced warning too and, and stretch this out a bit. Fairland, Indiana Grand, Knighthood Grove, Shelbyville, you're on the very southern periphery of this. I would still be heading down to your safe place right now. Looks like half the town is within the warning, half the town is not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say Shelbyville. Time to head to your safe spot, uh, even if you're not, you know, in the proper warning right now. Uh, if we zoom this out, our tracker to about 15 minutes, we're going to see uh, Needham, Bogstown, Fairlands, Indiana Grand, Rolling Ridge also included in the path of this storm. I'm telling you, I'm seeing a, a very good looking uh, signature on radar. It is passing just through Whitelands right now, and it will be crossing the highway uh, between Greenwood and Franklin there too. It's going to continue to move to the northeast. Fairlands, you're really, Fairland and Marion, you're really right in the path of this one uh, as it continues to move in that direction. I feel very confident in saying that you need to be in your safe place right now and you're not in a great position uh, relative to where we're seeing some of the worst of this storm. Looks like we're getting another radar update. Uh, I can also tell you that that storm in Tipton County, the tornado warning has expired. Um, we're going to keep an eye on this one as that other tornado warning begins to move out of the area, but we'll get one more update on that in just a moment here. We're going to switch to our, uh, our uh, debris tracker, and once again, we are seeing a little bit of debris here. It is now just to the east of Whiteland. It's this little spot, if we take a look, uh, again, right here, just to the east, uh, right near the D of Whiteland. Doesn't look like a great situation. It does appear a tornado has passed through the town or at least in very close proximity to it. It's going to continue to pass by exit 95 here along 65. So if, if you know where that is, that's the next place in line for this tornado. It's going to continue to move in the direction of Fairland, Indiana Grand. It will eventually cross 74 here, uh, again around the Fairland exit if you know where that is. And, and if you're in between that, especially if you're south of Clark and north of Needham, that is a location where we are going to see a uh, very likely tornado pass through next. A very serious situation. 
you have to head to the lowest floor of your house, an interior room. Uh, you know the drill at this point if you've been following our coverage. If, uh, if again, if you have a basement, that's the best place to go. If not, again, it's that interior room or the lowest floor of your house. Um, I just have some storm reports if you want that right now. And yeah, we have an update from meteorologist Alyssa Andrews. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so it looks like the KIND um, at our airport, 65 mile per hour wind gusts were detected. We also got another local storm report. Uh, winds downed multiple trees with considerable home damage between Martinsville and Paragon. So that was that tornado warning that you were talking about earlier with estimated 60 mile per hour winds. And we also got um, in Boone County a train spotter with a barn destroyed um, sometime around 1045. So that report just came in. And um, we've been looking at two. Oh, this is 5307. East 400 South in Howard County, another partial building collapse. So within these severe thunderstorms and, and tornado warnings that we're talking about, um, multiple house collapse. Looks like there's an entrapment situation due to a house collapse across Indiana 26. And there was a rescue by a sheriff and EMA staff. So I'm going to follow that and see if I can find out any more information on that, Tucker. Uh, thank you so much for that. Yeah, and again, another indication of just the power of the storms we're talking about. And speaking of the power of storms, you know, we're, we're not just talking about tornado warnings tonight. It's severe storms, too. And I want to bring you to this line of storms we were talking about just a moment ago. This is uh, warned for producing 70 mile per hour wind gusts. It is about to cut through downtown Indianapolis. It's already passing through the airport right now. Broad Ripple, Washington Township, Butler uh, University, you're all right here about to be impacted by this storm. The wind's going to be strong. I would urge you to leave the highest floor of your house and head to the lowest floor. Even though this isn't a tornado warning, things like trees or any kind of debris being picked up by the wind do concern me when we're talking about the, uh, the upper floor of houses. I have heard bad stories about trees coming down on roofs. So again, head to that lowest floor of your house. With this wind, you don't need to head to the basement as long as you're in a sturdy structure, but go to the lowest floor of your house and not the time to, to be looking out the window, by the way, because you can get projectiles when you have wind that's that fast and that will uh, be just as dangerous standing near a window while you may have a branch that goes through it. Head to the lowest floor of your house and stay in an interior room. Uh, we do have a look at our tower cam. I believe we can punch Excellent. up right now as that storm is making it through uh, downtown Indianapolis right now. As we work on that, you can see that this line of storms is now moving through central Indiana. And just because central Indiana uh, may not, the Indianapolis area specifically, may not be under a tornado warning, there's our, our tower camera right now. And obviously uh, not the, the clearest view because of the cloud cover right now. But as I was saying, just because uh, Indianapolis itself may not be under a tornado warning does not mean that there won't be damaging winds tonight. We have seen winds clocked at 80 miles an hour plus associated with this storm. Winds of 70 miles an hour have not been uncommon with this storm, Tucker. Exactly, and, and you know we can beat the drum as much as we can, but the fact of the matter is those wind gusts, uh, with tornado warnings by the way, those wind gusts are going to be just as strong as a weak tornado would be. So when you start talking about wind in the, uh, in the velocity range of 70 to 80 miles per hour, that's about your strength of a weak tornado. So that's something to be taken seriously. Just because it's not a tornado warning doesn't mean you're safe. There's a reason we have severe storm warnings, you know, or those aren't just for nothing. And tonight is certainly Certainly a very good example of the power of some of these uh, storm warnings and, and some of these storms may have. We have an update from uh, Alyssa here again. Yeah, th this is uh, pretty serious. If you have any students that are attending St. Mary of the Woods College, it's right over near Terre Haute in the Wabash Valley. There are reports of live power lines down on the ground. So, of course, you want to make sure you stay away from that. Avoid that area if possible, if, if that's something near you and you see that. And again, that's near St. Mary of the Woods College. Yeah, and, and actually, that's a great point. I'm really glad you brought that up because I can say from experience storm chasing across the country, you know, if you come across an area of fresh damage, you know, of course, the first uh, thought is to go in and help, but I do want to urge caution because of uh, situations like that. You know, you could have live power lines on the ground. You, you could have uh, other th problems, uh, things that, that make it dangerous to get into uh, damaged structures. And, you know, not everything that's been damaged is going to be 
structurally sound. So please uh, make sure that you're not getting in the way of any responders that may be out there. Uh, of course, you can call and let them know what you're seeing, but I would not do anything without the uh, advice of perhaps the first responders we're seeing tonight. And Tucker, you talked about how these storms have been cycling throughout the evening. Yes. I know we still have that watch box, that warning down in the Shelbyville area. What's the status of that storm right now? Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna dive into that one again because it's been one that we've been watching for a while too. And and the National Weather Service has not ended the warning on that yet, meaning that we're still looking at what appears to be a dangerous storm. They got extended to midnight. It, this warning has been extended. Okay, yes. as meteorologist Alyssa Andrews reports, this has been extended until midnight. Uh, this warning has, in fact, and we're going to take a look at our velocity here in a second uh, to figure out exactly where the greatest area of rotation may be. Um, and it does appear, you know, it does appear that the greatest area of rotation may be on the northern end of this warning. Um, it appears actually, yes, near Morrill. You're seeing that uh, mesocyclone, and at least I can tell you what I'm seeing right now is, uh, is two things. We have uh, a wave of strong storms that is approaching from the back end of this warning. All these bright colors you're seeing near Franklin, that does not appear to be a tornado warning to me. Uh, or a tornado uh, potential so much near Whiteland and Franklin, but rather a strong and threatening uh, straight lined wind situation that you could have those gusts up to 70 miles per hour there. But rather near Morrill, you're seeing some of the brighter green and, and pink side by side. This is a little bit out of the tornado warning at this point, but it does appear we have at least a mesocyclone, something uh, rotating. Again, that is near Morrill, north of Indiana Grand, moving in the direction of Morristown. So Morristown, you're not in a tornado warning, but I would have a keen eye out. Indiana Grand, you still are, and we want to respect what the National Weather Service is putting out there, so make sure you're in your safe place still. Uh, but we also have uh, what appears to be very strong straight line winds that have just moved through Franklin and Whiteland. And you know, even that we need to keep a close eye on because you can get some uh, spin ups when you have those bursts of wind. And I I'm really interested to see if we end up getting a, uh, a little meso vortex Tucker? here Tucker? that eventually moves into Indiana Grand. Yeah, yes. speak, speaking of uh, uh, winds, uh, Duke is reporting 37,000 people without their customers, 37,000 wow. customers without power at this point. Martinsville, apparently about 6,000. Is that right, Bob? Do we have another number on that? I think we just we have Martinsville and Duke at this point that are reporting. We're trying to get AES numbers as well. Yeah, that's really good to know. And, and again, uh, that that's just, again, the strength of the wind we're seeing. Uh, tornadoes, of course, would play into that, but when you have this level of wind, you're going to take trees down. There's going to be power outages. Uh, that's a big part of the impacts of what we're seeing tonight. Well, and you notice it, that it looks like it trends, like it might be weakening. So they have said they're going to continue the warning for now, but they're seeing what you're, what you're just talking about now, that it might be weakening in the Johnson County portion of this warning. All right, that's good to know. We'll point this out one more time. Just uh, we'll wait and see if we can get any new information. But for now, what we're saying is is the rotation appears to be weakening just a bit, excuse me, on this tornado warned storm, which is now to the east of Whiteland and Franklin. Um, that's good news, but the bad news is that there is still very powerful wind here. So even if there's not a tornado, you may be facing wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour. And that goes for this entire area shaded in yellow here, uh, or at least surrounded by the yellow polygon. Basically everything you're seeing on the screen has the potential to see those wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour. The, uh, the chance for a tornado appears to be diminishing just a bit within the warning, and that's as uh, our storm begins to evolve a little bit. And that's not to say it's weakening, okay? Very important uh, thing to discern there. It does not mean it's weakening, just means there's a little bit less rotation. This storm is still very powerful. Let me get an update on the storm itself for you, in fact, and we're going to talk about the severe warning. Uh, 70 mile per hour wind gusts is the hazard for this storm. Uh, we've been talking about, again, the powerful wind gusts all night long, and uh, this, this warning, which I'm highlighting for you right here, uh, this goes until 12.15 a.m. for Decatur, Hancock, Rush, and especially Shelby County right now included in this. Um, 70 mile per power wind gusts are going to do just as much damage as a weak tornado would do. So it's very important that we're taking these seriously, even if there is not a tornado warning in your area. We'll get an update on the storm too that is now moving through Marion County. A 70 mile per hour wind gust is also the concern we have with this storm. And another look towards Muncie as well, where we have a powerful uh, severe storm. And uh, to no surprise, it is 70 mile per hour wind gusts in this storm around Muncie. And this will take us all the way to the Ohio border there. Uh, also quarter size hail being warned in that storm too. 
for places like Delaware, Henry, Madison, and Randolph counties. Um, just another update for you on the history of the storm that you're following over in Sullivan County. They've requested CSX to stop trains due to gas leaks and oh. now they're going door to door in southern Sullivan looking for trapped or injured people. Okay that's a that's a very um, not a great situation but unfortunately we, we saw a very powerful storm move through Sullivan County and we can only hope that everyone was able to get to safety in time. Uh, we started tracking that storm and it was still in Illinois, in fact. Well, Tucker, as we take a look at the wider view here on Live Guardian radar, most of the trouble that we've been seeing have been on two tracks, one uh, to the north, one to the south. But that's not to say that this isn't part of the same line that's marching through central Indiana and through the vast majority of the state at this hour right now, correct? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And, and actually, we did just get an extension on that tornado warning, which we'll take a look at in a second. But th this has all been a part of the same line. Now, what I am seeing that kind of differentiates the two a little bit is that we have one Boeing segment in northern Indiana, and we have this second Boeing segment just south of the metro area. And when you have those Boeing segments, essentially what we're looking at is wind in the middle of the atmosphere just blowing very fiercely and being dragged down to the surface by some of that rain. So you're basically taking strong wind that's a couple thousand feet up and driving it down to the surface. And that can oftentimes make your storms bow out like we're seeing a very telltale sign of damaging and, and powerful wind. And you can see we have that perhaps uh, one localized burst of wind south of Indianapolis and that second in the northern part of the state. Uh, certainly both uh, both segments have been prolific, severe weather producers to say the least. And our storms are still very healthy as we have warnings that still are extended about 30 minutes ahead of the storms. And I, I fully expect those to be continued through the entire state. Let's get an update on that uh, new tornado warning. It is for the same storm just north of Shelbyville. And you know what, we were, we were talking about how it looked like uh, there was better rotation north of the previous warning. That is exactly what we're looking at here. So hopefully we were able to give you a, an early heads up on this one. I will say it does look a little bit diffuse. That's a good word to be using. That means the rotation is not significant. Uh, and that's a good sign that this um, this tornado warning may not be as serious as uh, perhaps some of the others we've seen tonight. But that said, it's still a tornado warning. It still needs to be taken very seriously. And right now, it's still in effect between Morrill and Indiana Grand. And this will expire around Morristown. Uh, again, no confirmed tornado here, but certainly there is some weak rotation. We're going to keep watching this one. I don't see anything imminent right now, but if you're within this red box, if you're around Indiana Grand or along Highway 9, which travels north south here, uh, or south of Morrill even, you're going to be facing strong and powerful wind. You may not, there could be a tornado, you may not even know because that wind could be just as strong as a weaker tornado here. And uh, these brighter pink colors, by the way, that is the wind on the leading edge of the storm. I'm gonna pull up our reflectivity for you. So let's keep it on the wall right there. because I'm gonna walk right back on it and we're gonna pull up our colors here. And you're going to see those reds and oranges. And I was talking about a Boeing segment earlier. So, so what is that about? Well, let me take our lightning off so we can see a little better. But uh, what we're seeing is, is essentially, as it sounds, it looks kind of like a bow. You know, when you, when you pull a bow back and it, and it stretches out, that's what we're seeing right here, this sort of, uh, this sort of backwards C shape right now. That's your wind in the middle atmosphere being uh, dragged down to the surface very aggressively. And that's basically spreading out. Uh, with these storms and producing those up to 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Uh, Morristown, St. Paul, anywhere in between those locations, really along 74 here, uh, we have that warning in effect. And that'll continue to move to the east. All of our warnings today have largely been for tornadoes or wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour. And so that's becoming, uh, it appears, more of our concern is, is actually the wind as our tornado warnings begin to wane. Now, one of the things we were talking about earlier was the fact that wind would be just as much, if not a greater threat than tornadoes today. Both are playing out to be significant threats, but especially as these storms progressed and moved east, it is the wind that we are primarily concerned about, and that is becoming the more dominant threat here now, too. And you can see those severe storm warnings extending all the way to the Ohio border here in areas that are uh, just north of 70. Actually, if you're 70 or north, we have severe warnings from Indiana all the way to the Ohio border. South of 70, I do expect we're going to see those warnings 
extended all the way to the border of Ohio and Indiana. So Connersville, Rushville, Shelbyville, Greensburg, uh, Brookville, these are all locations that are very likely to be included in the next severe storm warning. And that storm may not be more than about 30 to 60 minutes out from those locations, especially Rushville and Sh Shelbyville too. That, that storm is just stepping up on Shelbyville right now. And Rushville, that storm is approaching you very quickly. So a lot to look at here, but we are seeing a wind threat become the dominant concern. We just got a windfall or a wind report in windfall measured at 73 miles per hour. So it's just south of Kokomo and that was at 1120 PM. And also I'm going to switch this over Tucker to the watches um, and warnings here. The National Weather Service did just continue their tornado watch until 3 AM, which is information that we already had. But now they're they're saying, OK, we're going to keep this going until 3 AM. So they still see evidence enough that we need to be on alert and, and seeing if we are going to get any more tornado warnings out of these storms. And actually, if, if we zoom out a bit, it does look like they may have cut back the watch just a little bit in our northwestern areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, important to, uh, to point that out as well. Um, not for most of Indiana here, but the Lafayette area, uh, Tippecanoe County and areas to the west, you can see we still have that tan color. That's a high wind warning. That's going to be in effect through the end of tomorrow. But that tornado watch is slowly being cut away uh, on the back end of things as the threat diminishes in northwestern Indiana right now. Yeah, the wind advisory is going to go to about 6 p.m. tomorrow after the evening. Um, Tucker and, and Alyssa, we are getting some information from uh, Morgan County. We are seeing some pictures on social media of some extensive damage in the Martinsville area. We are heading uh, a crew down to that area right now. What's the history of the storm there in the Martinsville area? Um, refresh my memory, was that under a tornado warning there in Morgan County? Yes, that was. And you know what, as you were saying that, I, uh, I can go back and we can look at exactly what we saw on radar. We, we may be able to pick out the locations that were uh, impacted most directly by it a storm. It does look like it's sort of in the downtown area of Martinsville. But again, I, I don't want to be too specific because um, I don't recognize the uh, the areas on social media that we're seeing specifically, but it does seem like there is some damage in the Martinsville area. Well, let's take a look and we can see right here. Uh, this would have been right around the storm came through a little tougher to see on our, on our radar right here, but there is certainly indication of strong rotation. Perhaps the south side of Martinsville uh, is when we saw this move through around 11 o'clock. And again, it's it's this was from 11 o'clock. This is not current, but we are getting reports of damage from Martinsville, and it does appear we had an area of rotation pass through the southern part of the city. Yeah. I do. I've got a I've got a storm report on that exact location that you're talking about, Bob. Um, we did have winds that downed multiple trees with considerable home damage, and that was between Martinsville and Paragon. And in that location, there was an estimated 60 mile per hour wind gust. I'm sure there was gusts even higher, but those are the reports that we have. Yeah, and that was all from the same storm as we can see here. Uh, again, it's it's not as clear the rotation as some of our other storms, but you can see um, very clearly right really where this darker green color is tracking and I'll play a quick loop for you here, but where this darker green color is tracking, that's part of the uh, what we call the mesocyclone. That's that's the storm rotating a couple thousand feet up. So a tornado uh, very likely it sounds like uh, would have occurred somewhere just south of that darker green color and just north of that brighter blue color right in between the two. So ready, we're going to play that loop for you right here. We're going to uh, get a clearer view of where this storm passed through now that we're getting damage reports. I'm going to scrub our radar back a little bit and we're going to take it through here. Uh, this is as the storm began to approach uh, Spencer. In fact, right there, right right here, we can see this is a good starting point. Uh, this is a little bit before 11 o'clock. You have that red and green side by side. This storm, it looks as though it passed right through Spencer, continued near uh, Go Sport, Paragon, and progressed through Martinsville as well. So keep an eye on that path. I'm going to play this forward just a little bit for you so you can see frame by frame. And there we go. You can see that rotation in Spencer right there. Uh, continues to move to the northeast. Again, keep an eye on that red and that darker green color near Go Sport. Uh, continuing along the highway there through Paragon, Martinsville looks like it may have just passed through the south side of town. At least that's what radar is indicating. And then it began to, to actually, well, it died out a little bit and then came back again. That was the same storm that 
made its way through areas like Franklin as well. So it's, it'll be really interesting to see uh, some of the locations in um, some of those areas like Johnson County, south of the city. And again, this is the same storm actually that we're looking at between Bargersville and Bud here. That's the exact same rotation. This is a really long lived storm and we'll keep an eye on Franklin here. I'm going to keep playing this forward. We're going to continue to to sleuth out the storm, see exactly some of the areas that were impacted perhaps uh, most substantially. And there's that location. Looked as though it was going to go through Franklin. Instead, took a turn north past perhaps just south of Whiteland. That is a close call for Whiteland. Uh, very close call. And this storm is still tornado worn, but our current radar does not show as powerful rotation. You can kind of see here now you're looking at more of that bright pink and an orangey color. That's that's substantial. That's that's not so much a tornado signature, but rather that's what we expect to see when you have strong and damaging wind gusts. I mean, that's a sign that you could have gusts that are easily up to 70 miles per hour. You know, I wouldn't be shocked. In fact, if uh, we did have some gusts that exceeded that mark and I'm looking at the current warning, um, which is in effect and that is still warned for 70 mile per hour wind gusts as well as quarter sized hail but certainly a strong storm, uh, tornado warning or not. And I was mentioning it before, but a lot of our storms that we're seeing in the area now, we'll zoom out and give you a, a clearer picture. Uh, a lot of these storms, as we expected, have transitioned to more of a damaging wind threat and less of a tornado threat. And you can see all the way from the border of Michigan, essentially, down to uh, 74, where it, it connects uh, Cincinnati to uh, Indiana there, you have severe thunderstorm warnings for damaging wind gusts that extend all the way to the Ohio border. So a serious uh, damaging wind threat now unfolding more than tornado. As we have passed midnight, we want to reset for you right now. You are watching CBS 4 News coverage of an ongoing severe weather outbreak across the state. We do have reports of damage throughout central Indiana, throughout the southern parts of the state, also in the northern part of the state as well. I'm Bob Donaldson along with Alyssa Andrews, Tucker Antico. We are going to be staying with you on the air as this severe weather outbreak continues throughout this night. This has been a long night of severe weather that started a few hours ago as these storms have been marching in a line throughout the state. Tucker, what's the latest right now on all the watches and all the warnings? Who's under the gun at this hour? Well, we have a tornado watch that is still in effect for the rest of Indiana until 3 a.m. outside of the northwestern corner of the state. So nearly all of us right now are within this tornado watch until 3 a.m. That's a watch. Now, we don't have any tornado warnings active at this point. The last one just expired. That was in Shelby County. What we do have active are severe storm warnings, and these warnings are all in effect for wind gusts, which may approach or exceed 70 miles per hour. That's a very, very powerful uh, gust of wind if you are experiencing something in that uh, range of velocity, and that would be just as damaging as some weak tornadoes would be. You can see these lines on uh, what we call our reflectivity, our live guardian radar here. Those red lines, we have two separate lines of storms right now. That indicates where the heaviest rain and even some hail is, and in this case, it's also a good indicator of where some of that strongest wind is, as what we're seeing essentially here is rain begin to drag some of the powerful wind in the middle atmosphere down to the surface. And you can think of it as uh, as a kid going down a slide. Perhaps you have a motion that's going down and out as well. And that is why we're seeing that damaging wind threat along with these lines. You have that wind in the middle atmosphere and it gets driven down by the rain and rushes across the surface up to 70 miles per hour right now. We have warnings in effect that includes locations like Muncie, Newcastle, Shelbyville, and these warnings go all the way to the Ohio border. The only place that does not have a warning extending to the border is uh, out here near Richmond and Connorsville and Brookville. But I will say based on what we're seeing, there's a very good chance that we do get a warning for this part of central Indiana as well. But we can even pull up our velocity and we'll take a look at uh, the wind that we're seeing within the storms here too. And if we open it up, you're seeing a lot of those, especially near Shelbyville, you're seeing a lot of those uh, pink and, and tan colors. That is a very good indication of a very powerful wind gust on our velocity. That's what we'd expect to see 
with straight line winds. And uh, it's certainly a big part of our, our threat tonight. Um, if we switch back to our reflectivity and get a wider view again, you can see these storms extending from Fort Wayne all the way down to Columbus, even a couple storms still near Bedford, but it does appear that the threat in southern Indiana has diminished at least a bit for right now. Uh, it's tough to say whether we'll get another warning down there, but the strongest storms at this moment extend from just north of Columbus all the way up to Fort Wayne in two separate lines. You can see this one segment here near Rushville and a second segment that extends from Newcastle all the way out towards Fort Wayne, and we're just beginning to see some of these warnings extended into Ohio. We've had reports reports of damage across the state tonight. Some substantial damage, especially in Sullivan County and areas in the western part of the state. That's where our tornado threat was greatest tonight. And unfortunately, it does appear that a few tornadoes have struck those areas. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Tucker, we are getting some information now on the damage that's been caused by these storms, by these suspected tornadoes uh, throughout uh, central Indiana. This from the Johnson County EMA, they say they had a confirmed tornado touched down east of Whiteland Road. Businesses and homes have been flattened there. Uh, they could not confirm exactly what time that tornado touched down, but I know, Tucker, you can go back at your radar data and look at that. Johnson County EMA confirming a tornado touched down east of Whiteland Road. We do have reports of businesses and homes that have been flattened. We do not have any confirmation of any injuries associated with that damage in Johnson County. But again, that was one part of the state that was particularly hard hit. A, a, a line of storms that went through our southern counties. Also, our northern counties were hit. But really, it seems like the bulk of the damage appears to be from those southern counties that, that got hit hard just within the hour. Yeah, and we, we had a few long-lived storms that had a history of producing tornadoes or rotation. I, I'm seeing exactly what you're, what you're pointing out, Bob, right here on our radar, and you can see uh, this is exactly where we would have expected a tornado to be, just south of downtown Whitelands right here, sort of along the highway. Um, this was very concerning from the onset. We were watching this, and it's Sadly, not surprising that we're hearing this level of damage. We can actually go back to and see if there was any debris that that was picked up by radar at the same time of this. Um, and luckily, well, it's tough to see because we were near the radar, but we're going to go back. This was at 1135 PM for reference, everyone uh, just south of Whiteland. And you know what? There was debris uh, being picked up by radar. This was a radar confirmed tornado. And I'm going to point this out for you. Um, with my arrow, okay, so keep an eye on your screen. We're gonna, gonna point it out with the arrow uh, tool here and you're gonna see again right there. See that spot? That is just south of Whiteland. This is 1136 p.m., okay? This is likely exactly where your tornado is. That's a sign that debris is being lifted into the air by a tornado, all right? We're gonna go one radar scan ahead. This is our next image we got from radar. You can see that same area of debris moving with the storm and that passed again just to the south of Whiteland here and likely did damage as far as we're hearing. And if we take a closer look, we can actually get a really good idea of exactly where this storm may have crossed through. Again, uh, just south of Whiteland appears to be the hardest hit place based on what we're seeing on radar. We heard Whiteland Road, there was some damage sustained. Uh, again, uh, we can say for sure uh, there was some debris that was located here near Whiteland Road. We're going to continue to zoom in and see if we can get some more detailed information here. But you can see Whitelands, New Whitelands right there as well. Uh, this storm would have just crossed Whiteland Road. It appears uh, right around, let me draw this out for you, would have crossed right through here. This would have been the path the tornado took. Um, that is awfully close to the apparently downtown area of Whiteland. Uh, likely crossed the train tracks there as well, or the, sorry, rather the highway right there as well. And we did have a confirmed, uh, well, debris signature there. And, and I hate to say it, but it isn't surprising that we, that we are getting reports of damage. Um, you know, this is, a, this is one of those times when it's really important to check on friends, family. Um, We've had a busy night of severe weather here. We've certainly had a, a lot of damage and we still have strong storms ongoing in Eastern Indiana, but um, seriously, one of those nights where you, I need you guys to check on your neighbors, okay? It's, it's, uh, it's a situation 
you don't want to see ever uh, this kind of damage um, and so much of it widespread. But uh, you guys have just as important a job as we do bringing you the latest in terms of severe weather. I mean, you guys, you live here, you have friends here, you have family, so please um, do your job, be a good neighbor, and, and check on people you know. Uh, I'm going to give you the latest too. I'm going to do as much as I can for you, keep you ahead of these storms. We are watching, again, two separate portions of this line of storms continue to move east. This one here from Newcastle up to Fort Wayne, it just passed through Muncie. Muncie, you're, you're in the clear of the worst of the wind. Uh, you know, that is beginning to lessen a bit as these storms move to the east. It's likely still raining hard. A new tornado warning. Thank you. Alyssa Andrews, uh, do you have any information on it? Uh, we did just get a new tornado warning. Alyssa's going to get some information. I'm going to stand here and point out what we're looking at. Uh, and you can see this warning. I can say just from looking at this, it is north I'll of Rushville. And uh, Alyssa has been uh, getting information for us, damage, uh, getting information, relaying it directly from the National Weather Service tonight. So this one, this tornado warning has been issued for Rush County eastern Rush County in central Indiana and it's going to be until 1245 a.m. So this is the newest tornado warning that we have out right now. Um, it looks like we've got the hazard for tornado and flying debris. So this is going to be moving pretty quickly east at 60 miles per hour. And uh, I'm going to pull up our velocity again because I, I'm looking at my higher res radar and I may see something on here too. Um, and if we take a look, oh, you see, see that's a little messy. That, that's our radar having a tough time with all the wind out there, I'll be honest. What we're seeing here is, is not very clear. Um, so what we'll also do is look at our, our debris tracker first and foremost. Good news, I am not seeing debris in here, okay? Uh, that is good news. Uh, we're gonna wait for another frame on our radar because it's a little messy right now. Those, that, that would look uh, concerning, those reds and greens side by side, but I can tell you with a, with a trained eye, that is the radar actually having a difficult time discerning uh, what is going on inside the storm. Now, what I'm seeing on my higher resolution radar, I'm going to point out right now. That's, that's the advantage you have with watching us on CBS4 right now. I got a second radar I'm looking at, and when our, uh, our, our radar we're showing on air isn't uh, performing as highly, you know, we still have the information for you. So, uh, you know what, well, we just got a new scan. We aren't gonna need it because it's a lot clearer now. We have this area of rotation near Occident, if I pronounce that correctly, I, I, that is right where the uh, rotation is right now. A, a good call. Again, National Weather Service has been on their game tonight, getting these warnings out efficiently, quickly, and uh, has really been warning very well. We've seen, um, again, a lot of lead time with these storms. But uh, again, I, I am hoping I'm saying this town correctly, but I'll point it out for you if I'm not. Occident right there, we have this area of rotation within a strong uh, line of storms. Now the thing is, this looks like it may be a bit of a weaker rotation and with wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour, it may be very tough to tell if there is a tornado there or not. Sexton, you're also next in the path of this. If you're in Sexton or Occident, you need to be going to your safe place right now. Uh, Occident, it'd be right over your heads. Sexton, it, it's heading in there in about the next two minutes or so, and this storm is bearing down quite quickly as it moves uh, close to 70 miles per hour in and of itself. The, the actual storm motion is about that fast. It's very likely this uh, area of rotation passes between Raleigh and uh, Gings or Jings, uh, however that would be pronounced. It looks like a smaller town. Um, but that is uh, another location that is in the path of this immediately. I am beginning to see, at least on my higher resolution radar, that rotation is tightening up a little bit. Not the best sign, uh, not con confirmation by any means that there is a tornado, but uh, I'll, I'll point it out for you on the wall. Again, right here is what I'm looking at. Uh, that brighter orange and that lighter pink color, these side by side, looks like it just passed through Occident and will continue to move nearly due east. Let me put a tracker on there for you. We're going to get uh, some more towns and locations on here so you have a better idea of where this storm is moving. We're going to drag it out for the next 15 minutes. I would not be surprised if this warning is extended uh, given that we are seeing good rotation and that it will expire very quickly in fact. But there we are, Sexton, Raleigh, Falmouth, Bentonville, Dublin. Falmouth, Bentonville, and Dublin. You are not currently within the warning. That said, Bentonville and Dublin, I want you to be prepared to head to the lowest floor of your house, that safe place. Falmouth, you are on the very fringe of this warning. I'm gonna go ahead and say, better safe than sorry, head down to the basement, head down to the lowest floor of your house, a room uh, with uh, interior walls, not exterior walls, 
And uh, Falmouth, I'm going to make the call and say that that is where you need to be right now. Uh, that is by far the safest move you can make at this present time. Milton Waterloo also will be in the path if this tornado warning is extended. And even if it does not get extended, we have a very powerful line of storms moving into these areas. Connorsville looks to be just on the northern periphery of this too. I'll pull up our debris tracker. And once again, the good news is that I'm not seeing anything on our debris tracker. So uh, there is really no way to confirm that we have a tornado and that may be a sign that we do not in fact. But the conditions are certainly ripe for producing a tornado within this storm. And if you're near Sexton or to the east, uh, that's where we're concerned about uh, some strong rotation right now. I will say though, even in just a few minutes, it looked like the rotation picked up a bit. It looks like it's beginning to weaken a little bit more again, and that's just how these storms are playing out tonight, especially as we see more of a substantial line of storms develop, and I'll switch back to our reflectivity. Uh, a lot of times what happens when we have these storms that uh, develop into lines, you'll have more spin-up tornadoes, tornadoes that may last for uh, perhaps five minutes or even less, and they occur within a line of storms, and it can be hard to pick up on radar. Now what we're seeing here again is uh, it appears we have about three individual lines of storms uh, currently across western, excuse me, eastern Indiana. We have this line here that's moving in the direction of Greensburg. That's, uh, that's in southern Indiana here. We have this second line where we have the tornado warning in effect near Rushville and Newcastle and this third line which just moved through Muncie and will continue to move in the direction of Ohio. Well, good news. You're seeing what the National Weather Service is also seeing on this tornado warning um, right now over Rush County, and it looks like they may not keep this warning going for the full time that they initially warned for until 1245. They may end this soon, so we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep tracking it until that happens, but it looks like they're seeing what you're seeing where um, they may be able to release that early. And it's around this time, too, the National Weather Service on their severe storm warnings will add tornado tags saying, there's a chance that there could be a tornado. And that's what we have right now on those uh, severe thunderstorm warnings near Rush, Rush County. Alyssa and Tucker, I mean, this is an example of some of these storms as they're cycling. As we see them going from west to east, it's not unusual to see these tornado warnings popping back up again. Exactly. In other words, it has not been constant. They have been cycling. They have been pulsating almost and becoming more powerful when they're at their peak. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what we'd expect at this point in our severe weather threat. You know, in western Indiana, we were looking at all the data. We were pouring over a ton of data throughout the daytime today, and all of it suggested we would have a much higher tornado threat in western Indiana than eastern Indiana. But as these storms progress through the state, we would see that become more of a damaging wind threat. And that is playing out exactly the way the data suggested. And as you mentioned, Bob, we're seeing more of the uh, pulsating and, and more short-lived rotations at this point. That's because we don't have the same kind of uh, spin in the atmosphere that we did in western Indiana. In eastern Indiana, don't get me wrong, there is absolutely the potential a tornado can be produced, but the level of spin, the fancy word is helicity in meteorology, we do not have as much of. However, we certainly still have very powerful winds a couple thousand feet off the surface that is driving this storm threat and these storms are taking that wind aloft and driving it down to the surface and that's producing what is now a widespread damaging wind threat. Well because of that pulsing and recycling that's why they did put the um, possibility of these severe thunderstorms outside of the tornado warning with the possibility of producing a tornado so we're still going to keep an eye on these we do still have an active tornado warning right now over Rush County right there near Rushville so we're going to keep an eye on it but some of these other severe storms outside of that tornado warning also just concerning we're going to continue to monitor those as well those severe thunderstorms outside of the tornado warning and the good news is too right now I do want to point out is as we get uh, later into the evening we are seeing this line of storms begin to slowly move out of our area you know Muncie you're in the clear now and it's it's going to be raining where you are but the worst of the wind is out as you can see this line of storms has moved to the east Newcastle you're almost through it you probably got about five or so minutes of some strong wind, some heavy rain, and it will eventually move to your east. If you're in Richmond, you still have those strongest winds that have yet to get to you. That's one of the last stops before these storms are out of here in Ohio. If you're in Rushville, the worst of it is out. You know, Rushville, that rain may be subsiding right now too. In Shelbyville, the rain has subsided. And in Greensburg, you have a nice burst of wind about to come in as a severe storm moves through. 
but that may only be for about 15 minutes before that storm is out as well. Uh, some of our locations, actually, let's let's zoom out a little bit across central Indiana, get a wider view. And as we do that, mm -hmm. as we do that, it's important to note they did cancel the tornado warning over Rush County. Uh, very good to know. And again, meteorologist Alyssa Andrews has been back and forth getting uh, direct information from the National Weather Service for us tonight and uh, reports uh, from social media and all over as, as we've had more damage and uh, other storm reports come into our studio here. Now, what we're seeing is much quieter weather in the northwestern part of the state. I would say at this point it's safe to say that if it's not raining and you're uh, within a county of Tippecanoe County, if you're in this portion <clears throat> of Indiana, you're in the clear now. These storms are over. The front has made its way through. It's a cold front that's driving this threat. And as that front makes its way out, our weather becomes more stable. Tucker, as the uh, immediate severe weather threat begins to subside, we should mention that we are following breaking news at this hour on CBS4. We do have a confirmed, a confirmed tornado touchdown east of Whiteland Road. This is from the Johnson County EMA. They report businesses and homes flattened. They uh, could not confirm exactly when that tornado hit, but we have other local reports from Johnson County of damage, particularly in the Whiteland area. Multiple reports of buildings that have uh, collapsed. We have heard reports, we have not been able to get them confirmed yet, of people being trapped. There is an emergency response going on at this hour for some of the damage that has been caused by these storms which are now moving out of our viewing area but that is going to be the part of the story we will be covering throughout the evening throughout the the middle of the night now and again tomorrow because no surprise given the ferocity of these storms uh, not only just the the tornadoes that may have touched down tucker but also the strong winds that were causing damage we have reports of power outages throughout central Indiana. So again, this is to be expected with storms of this power. Yeah, and, and today was one of those calibers uh, of threats that we would expect a higher end severe risk. And we were, we were bringing that message to you all day. Today is not your typical severe weather day. We're beginning to see that now. And, and by the way, the, uh, the, the new Whiteland Road uh, tornado that we're hearing about damage along the road there, uh, we looked back at radar just uh, about 15 minutes ago. We can say, uh, for sure that the tornado would have passed across the road around 1136 PM. Almost to the minute we can give you the time that that tornado would have passed through the area. So just a few minutes after 1130 is when that moved through. Good news, if you're downtown or to the northwest, you're in the clear now. We are expecting that watch to be cut back as these storms continue to move out of the state here. It's currently 1221 AM. We expected the storms to move out between 1230 and 1 AM, and we're beginning to see that now. There are still severe storm warnings in effect for this line that is moving into Ohio at this point. We do still have some storms to the south and west of Indianapolis, so these storms are sub severe as we like to say they're they're not severe but they may still be somewhat strong and we'll take a look at some of the warnings we have out there and, and just bring you a quick update at the latest uh, we're seeing again we've been talking a bit about muncie uh, if you're at, in, in ball state you got a kid at ball state uh, they're in the clear now okay they're good uh, muncie is out of it here newcastle you are just about to be in the clear Rushville, you are in the clear here. Those storms have moved out. Shelbyville, you also are in the clear. Columbus, it's raining. I know you're hearing it, but you know what? That is not a severe storm that is over your heads. Uh, just going to be a downpour. Greensburg, you're about to get into some strong winds. You may hear uh, the wind howling. That threat will begin to diminish in the next, we'll call it about 10 minutes, maybe even less for you. Uh, some other areas to our south and west. Again, you're likely hearing rain if you're near Columbus, Nashville, a little bit south towards Bedford. Uh, you're hearing that downpouring rain, but guess what? No severe weather out there for you. I don't expect those storms to become severe. If they do, we'll, we'll bring you the latest, but it does appear the threat has diminished for these areas. These are just some uh, uh, pop-ups behind the front, which is now passing through the state. Uh, if you're in Bloomfield, Sullivan, uh, Spencer, Bloomington, Martinsville, areas that were impacted heavily earlier tonight, you are in the clear now too. Really, if you are on the eastern uh, half of the state, you still have some severe weather to get through. If you're on the western half of the state, 
you're certainly uh, getting into the clear as our weather begins to calm down. Crawfordsville, Greencastle, Lafayette, Terre Haute, all in the clear now as well. So uh, what's left? Well, Richmond, you still are in the path of the storm. Greensburg, we mentioned, you're still in the path of the storm too. We have a severe storm warning in southeastern Indiana near Versailles, and that's a location that uh, has been under that severe storm warning for a little bit. And these warnings that we're looking at, and I'll highlight them for you here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. These warnings, uh, they've been in effect for a little while. They're in effect for wind gusts up to 60 to 70 miles per hour. Um, each one of these, I'm seeing wind gusts up to uh, 60 or 70 miles per hour and perhaps some small hail accompanying some of these storms too. But for the most part, our severe weather threat is beginning to wane. That is a very good uh, sign for us, of course, and very good news uh, because we've had a busy night of severe weather. Now, it is a good thing to check on neighbors uh, or friends, give them a call, make sure they're okay, make sure they're, uh, you know, make sure they're all right, really. Now, this has been a very busy severe weather night. We've had damage. It's not an ideal situation, you know. We, we will prepare you as best we can, but at the end of the day, you know, these, these are powerful storms and uh, it's up to all of you as, as neighbors to check on your friends, check on your family. So not a bad thing to do as we uh, watch our storms begin to move out this evening. It's not to say our threat is completely over, but uh, we are beginning to see it uh, wrap up. So Tucker, where do we stand right now as far as uh, the active uh, warnings and watches? I know we have that watch that's going to continue well into this night until 3 a.m. But where do we stand on some of the severe weather, uh, severe uh, thunderstorm warnings that are that are still out right now? Yeah, and you know, I, I have a feeling I'm going to walk back right back under the wall there, so don't take it down yet. But I have a feeling what we're going to see is uh, our watch get cut back a little bit early here, and we've already seen that a little bit. But what I'm giving you now is a view of our warnings and of our tornado watch. All these counties shaded in red are still under the tornado watch. But as I was mentioning before, most of these areas, uh, even Marion County and especially to the northwest, are out of the primary risk. You know, that watch is very likely to be cut back by the National Weather Service and, and not kept until 3 a.m. Now, we do have some severe storm warnings. Those are those areas shaded in yellow here. But as you can see, they're primarily on counties that are bordering or at least one county away from bordering Ohio. So these storms are very quickly on their way out of the state. We still have a tornado watch that's in effect for parts of Ohio, and that's part of the reason the National Weather Service issued it until 3 a.m. But I feel confident in saying that we are going to see the eastern end, excuse me, the western end of this tornado watch. Uh, we're going to see that cut off as we head through the next couple of hours, uh, or really even the next few minutes, we're going to see that cut off uh, because those storms have since moved out of our eastern, uh, excuse me, our western counties and it is just our eastern counties that have these severe storms to watch. I will also point out, you know, we were concerned about this earlier, less so than the severe weather, but a few of the rivers down here, especially in southwestern Indiana, there are flash flood uh, warnings and at least flood watches in effect. And that's something to take seriously too with all this rain. Uh, you may see some of that flooding, especially in rivers or creeks. Um, so certainly something to take into account, especially um, if you are uh, checking in on somebody, that's important to be careful about. But for the primary severe threat, we are seeing things begin to wane. Alyssa, I know you've been following most of the damage reports mm -hmm. as they've been coming in. And what's especially noteworthy is those damage reports have really been extensive from the western part of the state straight through central Indiana and now into the southern and eastern parts of the state. Can you review some of those damage reports that you've been looking at throughout the evening tonight? Yeah, that's right. And even as, as early as we got the confirmed tornado on the ground over in the Wabash Valley on the Indiana side, when we were over in Sullivan County and Vigo County, uh, we heard of a, of a block of houses in Sullivan that were leveled near uh, St. Mary of the Woods College. It's right near Terre Haute. If you have kids that attend there, we heard of live power lines down on the ground in that location. As the storm continued to move eastward from Martinsville, we had reports of downed trees and power lines and, and people without power. Thousands of people reported uh, without power. And we also saw homes and barns destroyed in that location. And we also, from the Johnson County Emergency Management, um, have heard reports of businesses and homes that were destroyed after the confirmed tornado near Whiteland Road. 
And I, I want to point out to you really quickly, uh, we're going to begin to wrap up our coverage as storms move out of the state. Um, but some of the reports we do have in terms of winds, uh, the National Weather Service is an uh, official site for Indianapolis where we measure you know, our, our rain and our temperatures is the airport. And uh, one of our wind reports from the airport uh, was 67 miles per hour. That was a gust as storms moved through. So that is a confirmed wind gust of 67 miles per hour from the Indianapolis International Airport. From the Fall Creek Airport, it appears we did get a, uh, actually this is from a spotter, we got a wind gust of 65 miles per hour. It's very close to the Fall Creek Airport. And uh, another report, this is the Eagle Creek Airport, a 59 mile per hour wind gust. So gusts between 60 and 70 miles per hour certainly made their way uh, through the uh, 465 loop there. And as we know, there has been a lot of damage across the rest of the state. But let me give you one more quick look at our, uh, our radar here. Again, the severe threat is beginning to diminish across central Indiana. We do have a few severe storm warnings in effect for the westernmost portions of the state. But at this point, uh, we feel it's safe to wrap up our coverage. And if anything else does pop up, we will be here for you. We'll give you an update, though I can say uh, rather confidently things are beginning to wind down for tonight. All right, Tucker. Again, I'm Bob Donaldson along with Alyssa Andrews and Tucker Antica. We have been following this developing severe weather situation here in central Indiana, really throughout the entire state. We are going to continue our severe weather coverage on CBS4Indy.com. We have crews out in this night covering some of the damage. We have thousands, at least 27,000 Hoosiers that are without power right now. We do have reports. The most serious reports are coming out of Johnson County in the Whiteland area where we have extensive damage reports, reports of multiple buildings that are down and that have collapsed. We do have reports of uh, a massive rescue effort that's going on there for a uh, tornado that uh, the EMA says hit at approximately an hour ago. So again, we are going to continue to follow this breaking news, this severe weather outbreak uh, here in central Indiana. We'll have the very latest on CBS4Indy.com. But for now, we return you to our regular programming.